Chair and Board of Commissioners uh, for having, having us uh, here this morning. We'll, we'll be brief. I'm going to be extremely brief and just take one moment to introduce our newest team member. Um, he's uh, born and raised uh, here in Douglas County in District 4, uh, Mr. Jonathan Lupo. Uh, and so Jonathan is our uh, Director of Business Recruitment. Uh, Jonathan um, worked for the Georgia Department of Economic Development in the International Trade Division and then also worked for the state of Louisiana in their foreign direct investment group. So he brings a wealth of talent and also a wealth of local knowledge uh, here to our team, and we're really excited to have him on board. Okay. Jonathan, would you like to come up and just say a few words to us? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I'm just welcome to the party. Sorry. Thank you for welcoming me. It's uh, nice to be here, nice to be back home. Okay, Jonathan, if you could repeat your last name for the quote. Oh, uh, Lupo? Go to the podium if you don't mind. I know you shot this morning. Say it in Cajun. Lupo, L-U-P-O. Oh, I don't speak any Cajun. <laughs> it's all Georgia. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome. So, uh, once again, uh, thank you for your flexibility, um, one, on moving the agenda item up, and two, on the flexibility of the vagueness of the agenda item itself. Um, it's taken us a minute to get things uh, put together here, uh, but we are talking about um, some amendments uh, to uh, what's allowable on the resort uh, for Foxhall. Uh, so I wanted to kind of give you a brief kind of uh, synopsis of where we are and then kind of talk about what our actual request is before you this morning. Um, so, like I said, I'm here to, to give you that brief update. We also have Mr. Harrison Merrill Sr. and Jr. that are here as well. Um, but first on the update uh, for Fox Hall, uh, Fox Hall is, is 85 to 90% 90, uh, 90 completed with the architectural drawings um, by the Cooper Carey Architectural Firm. Uh, that's for the 250 room Weston Hotel and Conference Center. They are about 85% complete with the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing drawings, which means they're down to the nuts and bolts about how to build everything. Uh, they are also at the same level uh, with interior design drawings by the Gensler, Gensler Architectural and Design Firm. Uh, to date, they've spent roughly $3 million um, in the last 11 months on these architects, architectural and design and landscape um, and engineering um, uh, work that's been done. I know. Howard has been working very hard um, with that, so um, there are a lot of activity that's happening. In addition to that, uh, Fox Hall has completed and opened 74 rooms uh, in the villas, plus an additional 13 rooms in, in two lodges. So there are 87 rooms that are active right now. And I'll show you just a few. This actually, this is a real picture. So this is actually uh, some of the villas on one of the lakes uh, on property. This is an interior uh, of, of one of them. Another interior shot, another interior shot, and um, and we'll get to that in a second. So um, wonderful work that has been done thus far, and like I mentioned, there's um, 87 rooms that are open today. Uh, that is kind of reaching towards our 450 room total. Um, in the early spring, uh, they will begin construction on the 16,000 square foot clubhouse and restaurant. <coughs> 
um, which will also offer an event venue and offices next to the swimming center. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, progress on the development is being made and final details are underway uh, for water, sewer, and road infrastructure. So we are we're making progress. So now to our request. As I mentioned, um, our, our request is um, we've been working on a number of things. We're trying to get to that critical, that critical line of getting towards 100% on all of those things that I mentioned. Um, so as the design team has put pen and pencil to paper, it, is, it has been determined that a clarification is needed in the resort zoning approved on May 5th, 2009, and then of, of, in following that on February 7th, 2012. So you all should have received a document, a one-pager um, with this. Um, so here, there are the, the supplemental standards that are now in place for the project called the Fox Hall Resort and Sporting Club Planned Unit Development. And you will see uh, that paragraph five um, on your sheet there, and I apologize for the print, um, deals with curb and, curb and gutter and sidewalks. Um, part B deals with the multi-use trail network that will be linked to the county's regional transit system, which uh, Commissioner Mulcair uh, has, has championed. Um, so first, uh, Fox Hall and his design team would like to clarify that sidewalks will not be installed on the interior streets in light of the significant trail network that will connect all of the internal structures with trails either adjacent to or nearby um, all of all the roads. So I know the typical county standard is sidewalks are installed on all of the roads, but, as, but the way the resort is laid out, the trail network will connect individuals to all of the facilities uh, throughout, uh, throughout the development. So. Um, that's, that's one point. Um, related to that, uh, Fox Hall will also use swales rather than curbs and guttering along all of the interior roads, and then we believe that is consistent with the um, original approvals. Uh, so this is, kind of, like I said, going back to the, the standards centered around public roads and the requirements of curb and gutter and sidewalks. Um, uh, next, and because of the residential resort field that is a part of the development standards, Fox Hall proposes to eliminate any uh, A cell and D cell lanes in the interior roads. This is all the interior roads on property, leaving them out of the main uh, entry on Caps Ferry only. So Caps Ferry Road will still have A cell and D cell lanes, uh, but kind of meaning within the character of the resort, trying to eliminate the A cell, D cell lanes on the interior roads. Um, finally, um, in one location, the whole design group has thought that it would be a good touch to have one bridge made out of timbers and not just our typical concrete institutional bridge. Uh, they are looking at options that will be capable of holding a fire truck. Um, so making sure that we're ensuring safety um, is, is maintained on property. Um, what they have seen so far is a product that will hold the weight of a tractor trailer. Uh, from a design approval standpoint, there are instances when both the state and local governments have design approval authority. Uh, Fox Hall requests that if there is a binding state regulation, that the state standard be enforced. Uh, this has come up recently regarding the county fire marshal requiring that a road be constructed along the rear of the west end so that a ladder truck can reach the top of the building. And I'll have a couple pictures here uh, describing that. Uh, we believe that there are ways to ensure 100% occupant and public safety without occupant and public safety without that road requirement, and it can be done by creating an oval-shaped uh, lanes that can accomplish the safety concerns while meeting the state standards. Um, safety is a number one priority, but Fox Hall believes it can be achieved with a bit of design sensitivity at the same time. Uh, to that extent, Fox Hall requests that you permit the use of state of Georgia codes and requirements rather than the local county regulations in the event of a conflict. And I'm showing you some examples. Um, this, this one's kind of hard to see. But other resorts, um, it is very hard to see. Can this? Uh, yeah, it's not well, um, what you have here is a resort <laughs> hotel and a river right behind it. Um, one of the, the requirements has been placed is that a fire um, uh, truck road be along the entire rear of, of the building, so along this, so it would kind of be like a straight line, kind of like, um, and what they're saying is that state standards don't have that same level of, of requirement, and what that does is it basically kind of changes the, the, the feel, the integrity 
uh, of the resort field. So when you're coming out of the rear of the facility. And so as you see, this one here um, is bounded by a river uh, on the rear. And oh, that's a better picture. So this is the Ritz-Carlton in Lake Oconee. Um, and as you see, the rear of this, the Lake Oconee is behind it. And all of our paths um, behind, <clears throat> behind the resort. And so it's really just trying to show consistency and that there are a number of resorts um, that have that, that are like this, which is something similar. Uh, Fox Hall has proposed in kind of an oval shape um, that, that can um, serve for a fire truck, but then that oval shape will kind of be like this, instead of one large 26 foot wide road running along uh, the rear of the resort. It just takes away from the resort feel in and of itself. So um, I've laid out a few things. Some of those are related to uh, public road requirements and also related to the standards um, that are being asked of them as it relates to um, the uh, <clears throat> emergency truck lane. So once again, it is not taking away from the public safety. There are state standards that, which apparently the county standards kind of supersede the state standards. And so they're trying to stick with what the state standards are. And that, okay. that's all I've got any questions. Any questions or comments from the Water Commissioner's Vice Chairman Robinson? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just that was a lot, but I think I got it. So let, me, <laughs> it is a lot. Let, let, let me make sure I get this. So I, I heard a couple of things. I'm going to go back to 09 and 12 in your opening comments. Um, and, and again, what I heard is there's some standards in place. So I'm, I'm going back to doing business in Douglas. Um, I'm, I'm, what, what I'm looking for is the consistency of our code. Uh, it sounds like uh, we make com clarify, confirm this for me that we. We, the county, introduce code at a higher level, a higher standard um, that perhaps, um, I won't say compromises, but changes the character area of this, this resort, or this planned development. Is that true? Specifically as it relates to that emergency road, yes. Okay, so, all right, so it's specific, so it's not broad. Okay, good. Second thing is that I heard you talk about a state standard. So is there a different standard for subdivisions as it is for resorts at the state. Clarify what you meant by that. So the, the, the state standard is more specifically to the emergency access road. Okay. Um, I, I can't speak to residential because I don't, that's, that's not my, <laughs> my forte there. Um, but it, it's more specific as to um, how the, the distance from the, the rear of the, we're all portions of the building. So if you're approaching the building, you have parking lots that front the building, and so there's easy access to get to it, especially with the height of the building. Then there are some roads on the, on the sides. Um, what is happening on the rear is that when you're walking out of the resort, you're from the rear of the resort, you're kind of walking into the selling point you know, of, of the resort. And under the state standards, that oval-shaped road, which has uh, been designed in the rear, is, is designed according to state standards. Um, so then things from a county perspective have basically said, all right, that's the state standard. But the county standard is, is that that road has to be um, accessible along all sides of, of the facility. Right, so I'm going to close my comment because I'm sure my peers will weigh in on the things that are important to them. Um, state standard, um, there's not that many resorts um, in the Soda metro area, right? Some of the things that you mentioned, Lake Oconee, Chateau Long, Calvary Gardens, etc. And of course, you've got Fox Hall. And a resort, in my mind, is not a subdivision. So it sound, this, this is sort of equivalent to me, in my mind, three acre minimums but for everything throughout the county, right? 1,800 square feet. Etc. So it sounds like this is a, a vanilla flavor standard that's applied, and I think a, a resort in my mind is a little bit unique. But I'm only focusing on this one issue that I would I would be okay with this this particular point uh, regarding public roads is. And I want to make sure I get this right. If in fact you're saying that you want to change, you don't want to conform to, you want to have an oval shape versus conforming to um, uh, our requirement of, 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 I guess, fire, and I'm, I want my guys to weigh in, the team, I'm sure, uh, regarding this, is that what, what we don't want to do is ever be in a place where we've got a fire, not heaven forbid. And my trucks, our, our brand new equipment, 
can't reach or we don't have enough equipment to reach that hotel. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a standard that I cannot that, that that I can't overcome that. The girl I put a risk component on that one right there. So that's the only thing I looked at. Most of this I'm like, yeah, I'm okay with. But I need somebody to weigh in that says that okay, if we go with your oval versus what we're requiring. And if my truck can't, one, get on that oval, or two, it's holes or it's ladders. Again, you guys know I'm not, that's not my, my specialty. But I, I can't accept the risk. So can somebody speak to the risk? Like I, if, if I'm all the way all here, away from the side of the building, and I can't, I mean, am I putting the holes from the corners to this five story? I mean, I don't know how high our ladder trucks go. I don't know what this means. I don't know how many we have. Can somebody answer just that and, one question? And if I could add to that, because um, I, I, I definitely want them to be able to respond to that. Um, the safety is a 100% concern of the, the resort as well, okay. um, is to ensure that, that every piece of that property is accessible, and especially from an insurance standpoint, they're going to make sure that that is the case as well. Um, and so they want to do everything they possibly can to work with um, the, the county and staff to ensure that there is a plan that is amenable, um, that works from a safety standpoint. Um, I think what we're, the, the main piece is, what is that solution outside of that road going completely around the building? So, can, can, yeah, can you answer, because I'm still not clear, is it the fact that the truck can't fit on whatever the dimensions is of the circle or the oval, or is it, it just it doesn't get you close enough for that hole to have the pressure? I mean, I need to understand sure. really what y'all are saying. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you for certain. And and uh, I believe it was a 20 foot road that the oval is is laid out to be. Is that correct? Right. It's a 20 foot road, and I think the the request has been made is that it be 26 foot wide road, and that 26 foot wide road be like I said along the building. Um, okay. I have a question for a fire chief. Uh, fire chief. Can you get my question answered, I think that's what you wanted to talk about, that road, and, 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 and can the truck get in, in that space that you just mentioned, 26 feet, can the truck get in that space, Archie? With a 26 foot wide road or a 20 foot road? 26 is standard. 26 is our standard. Then you said 26, right? So 20 is designed as a 20 foot wide oval, and I think there the were to, to what Chief Spencer's state, statement is, the standard is a 26 foot wide road. And I think, Madam Chair, we've made some concessions. The fire marshal did on the road in the weir so that it still gave the resort feel, but the base up under that area would support the ladder truck. So it would still look like grass, although there was access provided for the ladder truck. So we did make some concessions with that. So, so is it weight that was the issue? So if you've made that concession, I'm fine. Uh, I guess the distance holds. Can we reach the top of the building? That's all I'm really trying to get at. If we have access to the rear, we can. Mm -hmm. You can reach it. What the uh, what the state standard does is the state standard. <laughs> We're probably going to need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Get on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all go up to the. Sorry. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for those that don't know, this is Jay Williford. He, he's our fire marshal. Uh, when Scott Bishop retired, uh, we recruited Jay. So Jay's our new fire marshal. Uh, got years of experience with Carroll County. And uh, so he, he's doing a great job for us, and, and we, we appreciate everything he does. Uh, just a couple of points. Uh, realize that the state code is the absolute minimum. Douglas County has chosen to go above that, and uh, we've been very successful in that over the years. And, and we have a, uh, in my opinion, uh, although it may, it may be a little biased, I think we have increased the fire safety uh, for our citizens out here by doing that. Uh, as far as this particular project, uh, I'll, I'll let Jay speak to some of the concessions that have been made, but fr from a fire department operational standpoint, we need access to all four sides of any building uh, in the event of a fire. As far as the height of our ladder trucks, we have 100-foot uh, ladder trucks, so that's how high we can go. Uh, this is a five-story Five story. Yeah, five-story five uh, facility here. So 
our trucks could reach that okay. uh, from, like I said, as long as we had the access. Uh, from a uh, fire department standpoint, of course, we, we always want access. Uh, that allows us to do our job and the concessions that, that Jay has uh, already made as far as uh, our code actually says we have to have a, a, an all-weather access road. Hard surface. <coughs> hard, hard surface. Hard surface. And, it, it needs, and uh, the code also states 26 feet wide and uh, from 15 to 30 foot from one side of the building, allowing us to access one side of the building. Uh, the, the, the state minimum says uh, is, is basically for engine companies, not ladder trucks. It deals with engine companies getting in close. And it basically leaves the uh, leaves it up to the authority having jurisdiction to determine, uh, and, and it makes a gray area. Really, the state code makes a gray area for us. We've got it black and white. We've got a, we've got a code for that, and it's specific. And uh, that's that's what we've applied here. But we we've said you know hey we can disguise it. We can put grass on it. Uh, we can make it, you know, put facade around it, uh, bushes, whatever, <coughs> as long as we can access it. Uh, okay. So, uh, so it's artificial turf. Um, I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, the, the way it, the way it, uh, uh, that that some companies have done it. Uh, I'll take Google for instance. It's a uh, some make a fiber that mixes in with the soil and you plant grass over it, basically, and it's a hard surface that, that a truck can run on. Uh, it's a big old truck and it, it will be fine. You uh -oh. can anchor, you can do what you need to do. According, according to the architecture, or, or according to the design of the stuff, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just mixes in the soil. Okay. Uh, and and we, we've discussed several options. Uh, uh, it's, they even wanted to, we even discussed uh, some benches in specific areas and, and you know, uh, bushes and things of that nature, you know, to, to dress it up. Uh, the architecture to dress it up. I think the landscape architect was actually the one to come up with the design. Okay. All right. I, I think, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm sufficient for what I need for right now. I'll yield the floor for the rest of my group. Okay. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. just to give some background information on any normal development, these requests could not be brought to the board. They are not variable. Um, but in this development, when the master plan was approved, there was a section put in there about design deviation. So any deviations from the design it says has to be approved by the board commissioner so that that left an opening for um, the board to make decisions such as these. Now we did request additional information and more precise information a couple of weeks ago and I think all we've received so far is what, what we received this morning. It seems like we are achieving our goals just by keeping everything aesthetically <coughs> pleasing at the same time. So really, we, we accomplish our goals, basically, with the, not a workaround, but it's just an adjustment that you made to keep the beautification in place. Is that what I'm hearing, basically? Uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we, we're open, uh, the, the code and the standard says a hard service that will accommodate the weight of a truck. I, we're wide open on that. Mm -hmm. As long as we get our, as long as we get our lane in there, so we can access, we're yep. we're, we're open to, to anything as long as we can get access in there. Okay. And as Commissioner Robinson pointed out, it, this this truly is a life safety issue as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that's why we're so adamant about it. Okay. Good. All right. Any other questions from the local issues, Commissioner Bader? Uh, so the road that you're proposing. Is how far away from the building? Um, actual distance, I can I can probably better show you than I can tell you. <laughs> Sorry to say anything. I think it's 32 feet. Is the maximum distance that has to be? Correct me if I'm mistaken. I think it's like 30. It's 15 to 30 is the road that is is, is, the, is the maximum that's distance. That's what we require. Yeah, that's what we require. I don't but know what, how, how how far is the road is that y'all. I think the latest and greatest were within that. 30 foot. Yeah. On, on our road? Yes, sir. But now your proposal road, how far is it? I haven't been a part of that conversation. Okay. So I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I think the big thing is that it doesn't hit every corner at 30 feet, you know, in other words. And, and in the access road, it's not all four sides, it's just one side. It's just yeah, one side of the building. It's not all the way around, it's just one side. 
I guess a, a point of clarification that was to, to Howard's point and the point that was just made. So the the oval itself is within the 32 feet uh, of the building. The the biggest concern was the all the way at, at all at all points of it. I think that was where kind of the clarification needed to, to be made um, was was on that component uh, of. It. Is it between? Uh, <clears throat> that pool and the, the river are the buildings. Back and, and my apologies. This is this is the Ritz Carlton. This was just used <laughs> okay. as an example. <laughs> this is a fully complete aerial uh, of that. That was the, the best thing I could get up there as far as the visual goes. Uh, so there's no lake behind um, uh, this one. It is solely just the open green space. Well, uh, to me, this is a lot to absorb in a work session. Just off, uh, off the cuff, uh, it's a, it requires a lot of expertise, uh, clarification, and I would like that we just table this at this time. Is there any reason that you could not table it at this time? I, I believe that there are some some solutions that I believe we could maybe talk with the uh, fire marshal and Fox Hall on that maybe we could resolve today. Well, why does it have to be, if it's so important, why are you just bringing it to us now at the last meeting of the that is, that, that is That is an excellent question. Um, it has taken us, to, to Mark's point, it has it's taken us a while to kind of get to this point. Uh, we've kind of gone down two different paths. Uh, where we are right now at this, this, this juncture is the, um, the, the delay pushes construction and everything back. And we're at a critical point right now where, where we're trying to get it get it complete. Albeit, it did take us a while to get to this point. But uh, a couple of weeks wouldn't be that damaging, I don't think, uh, for such an important issue. Yes, uh, you know, we if we sign off on this and God forbid there is a fire, it could come back on the county too because of our, uh, we deviated from our own code. So sure. I think we need to look at this more closely, talk with uh, the, the fire chief and everything. This is a lot to absorb just, <coughs> and then vote on it tomorrow. Uh, Please understand. Uh, had you come to us sooner and talked to us individually, that may have helped, uh, but I'm just not ready to vote on it. And I, I yield back, okay. I'll start off with the uh, <coughs> concurrence of uh, the Commissioner Guyver. Um, I'm, I guess I'm curious, number one, that uh, the Executive Director of the Development Authority would make be making a pitch on uh, code uh, variants and code changes, uh, uh, and the fact that uh, you alluded that y'all have had to work through a lot of issues to get to this point over two, three, four weeks, well, you know, whatever the time frame. Yet the expectation is the commissioners are going to come to a conclusion, uh, you know, in, uh, in 24 hours or, you know, right now here today. I think that's patently uh, unfair, uh, to be honest with you. And I would like to table this and have more discussion. And, and there's a lot of changes in here. I'm, I'm seeing the, the uh, sidewalks would not be required. As a, as a big, huge change uh, to a, a development concept. So I would just like, I would prefer to table this and have some more discussion with, with staff, uh, be it fire, fire uh, uh, services and the development services. And I yield back. Okay. Any other comments, Commissioner Mitchell? I'll just in closing. Um, I've got several questions, yes, sir. but there's no need for the question in the Q&A now because it sounds like what we're going is to let us all digest this <coughs> and make sure kind of where we should or shouldn't be with this particular makeup. So I'll just, then to make this meeting longer, I'll just refrain from many questions and I'll get back with you guys on some Q&A down the road. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, does that wrap it up? Anything else? Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, this board, uh, we would like to just take a look, at sure. a deeper dive, and uh, digest most of the items. Um,
all of those plaintiffs, particularly, particularly one regarding the safety piece. And Pamela, I believe you, you sound like you have something in place, a model to work around. And once we look at it and, and make sure that we've dotted every I and crossed every T for the citizens here in Douglas County, then we can go forward. Yes, ma'am. So it should, uh, I'll work with my, with my board of commissioners to see if we can put it on the uh, first agenda in January. That gives you two weeks to look at it, and then we'll. We'll take a look at it again in two weeks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. That's fair. Thank you. And then also, also, um, Mr. Pumphrey, if you would like, you could talk to each commissioner, mm -hmm. like we typically do. If you want to talk to each one, so you can just lay out the plan, so they can understand if they have some specific questions. We will do that. Okay. And yeah. then we'll have it on our agenda in two weeks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can we have access to, to Joe Fowler? I mean, I, I get, um, I, I appreciate um, our executive <coughs> director. Um, of, of economic development, but I think this is so the private side you'd be talking to us, not necessarily. But can, yeah, we, I okay. think he framed it well as far as the project, but there's okay. some details that he shouldn't have to be in the middle of. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, and, and to, to that point, we were, that was the game plan the whole time. Um, Joe had a court case that had been had for two months, and they set it for today at this very time. So he's in court right now. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. We look forward to discussing this, and we'll have it on our agenda in two weeks. But in the meantime, those 14 days, we need to make sure we pull all the pieces together. We need uh, our attorney here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, and we look forward to talking about this in two weeks. All right. Let's move on to the next item. Um, the next item, we have a public hearing, and it's tab number four to amend the Douglas County Code of Ordinances, section 3-70, uh, pursuant to the um, recent passing of the Sunday brunch bill by voters regarding time requirements for the Sunday alcohol sales. Uh, um, Manager Roberts. Yes, yes, thank you, Madam Chair and, and Commissioners. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So the voters voted to, to, to make this change, and that would require our ordinance to change. And that would be a decision that the commissioners would need to make. So it's a uh, um, section 370, and uh, uh, activate uh, alcohol sales at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Any questions? Just hopefully, I don't take okay, it long. Question for the board. It was pretty simple. But it your question, Commissioner Guy. Why does it have to be a public hearing if the voters are voting? The voters simply approved by referendum. The the uh, power of this board to implement the legislation. It's not been implemented until you change your ordinances. Oh, okay. So it'll go into effect if y'all decide to vote for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions? Okay, we'll move on. Thank you so much for the presentation. We'll move on to tab number five, resolutions to adopt the 2019 budget. Uh, Jennifer Hallman, I believe you will present tomorrow. Do you have anything, Director Hallman? Do you have any comments? Uh, no, ma'am, just uh, Mark sent out the um, budget presentation as well as the comments, post hearing comments, I believe on Friday, and I believe they're also attached to your agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a, a bunch of clarity. So, tomorrow's um, this is an adoption meeting, this is not a public hearing, and what we're doing is breakfast. What are we doing? We're reconciling any changes that have done since our last public hearing. Is that? That is accurate. True. We'll be discussing it as well. It's on the agenda for the finance team this afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Next, we have our business items. We'll move on. Tab number six: authorization to approve an IGA with WSA for the installation of stormwater pipes in the eight residential subdivisions at a cost of 50 percent of the estimated cost, not to exceed. $400,000 and authorized the chairman to sign all related um, documents subject to legal review. Um, Mark Teal, I'm county administrator. County administrator. Um, yes, ma'am. I was asked to get with Gil um, to develop an MOU or an IGA with WSA. So essentially, WSA <laughs> says that the estimated cost of the storm sewer to replace the storm sewer in these eight or nine subdivisions is a little over $800,000. Um, so what the IGA says is that the county will, will pay for half of that up to four hundred thousand. So if it ends up being nine hundred, we still pay four hundred. If it ends up being less than eight hundred, then we pay half. So at the most would be four hundred thousand. And it's over a five year period with the first year, first payment beginning in twenty twenty. Okay. Any questions from the board commissioners? Ma Madam Chairman, I met with Gil just by happenstance this morning at the Chamber of Commerce and <coughs> We have some proposed changes, but I think Mark has summarized the generality of what the agreement is. 
Um, I did get, just so y'all know, not only is this an economic development issue, but the the infrastructure benefits the public system, and so that's very that's the key to your ability to be able to do this. And Gil concurred with that that it benefits the, the public system. Uh, we've made some a couple changes, uh, and they're too lengthy to go into. But the primary one is I subjected y'all's payment over the five years to the work actually being done, and also there's a a stay period if the work is not done and then a closure period if the work is not done within the five years from January 31st of 19. But in talk, I don't think that's going to be problematic. We may have a little bit of different view on what the current stormwater management agreement says, but in essence, I think y'all can go forward on this based upon the public infrastructure, improving the public health, safety, and welfare of the public. And Gil did concur on that, so they haven't seen our changes, but I think those are the work out. Okay. So essentially what this is, Madam Chair, which you're aware of, the, so these eight or nine subdivisions currently have, well, they're not subdivisions yet, they are pre-final plat. There's no final plat yet. Um, they have corrugated metal pipe outside the right of way and WSA now requires concrete, reinforced concrete pipe. So WSA would dig up the corrugated metal pipe and replace those with reinforced concrete pipe. Okay. Any questions from the board of Commissioner Robinson? Any Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, just to give context for the public that may be looking at this and listening to this for the very first time, this is dealing with uh, the, the overall uh, objective of getting rid of blight within the residential communities. Uh, we term this pipe bombs. And the whole purpose was, okay, there's a stall in our growth. We recognize that perhaps our, our new growth, which obviously is, is predicated on both a commercial, industrial, uh, and inclusive of residential, uh, perhaps could have been up to 2%, but it was a drag because we've got these communities that are incomplete. While we know that development is occurring here and building is, we, we also recognize that there's a pause. So th th this is my point that I made earlier. Sometimes <coughs> you don't want to overregulate. I appreciate the standards, but there should be an acknowledgement or at least a transition from the old to the new that, that, that allows things to keep moving. And what you had were developers who, who were, and really the small local developers, which Douglas County was built on, uh, in case everybody forgot, was a small builder who actually built Douglas County to what it was. Uh, a lot of them went, went the way of, of extinction because of the recession. Uh, but, but it's one of those where when you look at this, it was to give them a chance uh, to open up regulation, turn the regulations away, so that people can come and do business and get rid of this blight that's dragging on your, your homeowners, uh, your residents, uh, the neighbor's property value. Look at it this way. If we complained about an empty house, this foreclosed, think about an entire pipe farm <coughs> and the long-term effect of this pre-existing condition that needed to be addressed. Uh, this, and again, this is just for context and for the record. So the Board of Commissioners is actually considering this, coming alongside our Water Sewer Authority uh, to sort of deal with this particular situation. Um, I supported this. This is something that we had um, at least two, uh, I know James, you guys were aware, <laughs> at least two to three meetings that I was involved in. I know there was a lot of sub-meetings. We know we had stakeholders, we had builders, we had realtors, uh, we had um, bankers that were in the room that, that participated in coming up with the solution. But this is something that is that's necessary. We're, we're, we're trying to be an administration that deals with very tough situations. Um, and I just want to uh, show that I support this. I'm glad that, you know, Ken, I appreciate you keeping this tight, uh, making sure that legally uh, this focuses on just this project. Our job is uh, with this is not to, to sort of promote past errors or future errors, but just to deal only with this particular issue. So I yield back to you. Thank you. Or any other uh, Yes, sure. just, just a couple. Ken, just for uh, make sure we're clear, because I know there was a lot of conversation being had about WSA providing the pipes, the labor, uh, which installing it and all this other good stuff at a cost roughly about 800000 Am I correct? Yes, so they, they estimate 800. We're capped at four. I got you. I got you. I, got you. I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to exact. I just want to kind of make sure that that's what that all includes. Because I know if you technically look at it, because with the labor and all this other stuff, it could have been a whole lot more. But they are putting it in themselves mm -hmm. uh, to offset. No, I think they're contracting. I think oh, the total cost is eight hundred thousand. Oh, got you. Okay, okay. And if it's more than that, 
we capped our contribution at 400000 over five years. Got it. Okay. Good. So if it goes over, the way I have it written, they would assume the excess cost. Yeah. Because they actually can control a little bit with in-house labor yes. and contracting yeah. out. That's, that's fine. That's fine. And, and the five-year period is that roughly about a hundred or so thousand dollars per year that they're anticipating we pay WSA. I think it was eighty. Or, that was around. Right. It works out about that's eighty. Okay. That's I want to say. Got it. Got it. That's okay. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Starting in twenty twenty. A five year period about roughly 80, 85,000, whatever that number is. The, the, let me make sure I'm 80, 20, 20. 80. That's okay. Yeah, the first payment, January 31st, 2020, and I put provided the reimbursable cost have actually been incurred. In other words, if for some reason it doesn't go forward, we wouldn't make that payment. Right, right, until they've actually incurred the cost right. of, mm -hmm. of building that particular. How many, how many lots? I know we talked about eight to nine subdivisions. Roughly 387 single family units. Is what well, the to. Now I'm relying on data that was provided by them, so I don't. 387. 387. Mm -hmm. Oh, 387. Eight subdivisions and 387 lots. Okay. Got you. Okay. All right. So, and you'll get the clarity of, of in writing what that really all will entail. I'm assuming you got that, so we can know exactly how many lots, not how many lots, uh, our costs when the when we incurred this cost. Of roughly eighty thousand dollars per year for a five-year period to offset this four hundred thousand dollars. Right. They'll have to submit a. Uh, they'll have to submit something to Jennifer. The way it was originally structured, it, the cost just began in January on January thirty-first of two thousand twenty, and for the next five years, mm -hmm. we've modified it to say that it provided <coughs> that you've actually incurred the cost, and if you haven't incurred the cost, the payment stayed. But we've also put a cap that this has to be completed within the five-year time frame or the deal expires. In other words, y'all want that y'all want the economic incentive now. Right. We don't want to defer it out. Right. So we're putting incentives around them to get the job done. Right. So hopefully they'll get it all done within the five-year yeah. span mm -hmm. so we can kind of make our payments and be done. Right. My guess is the first deal and this contemplates their first action probably in March because it'll take them two or three months to get all the necessary sign offs and access rights and all that stuff. So we anticipate them to go ahead and get this all done really but this is the this is the infrastructure that they'll be put in place so they'll get that out to shoot done in the first year possibly. You know. Mark do you know I don't know that answer that that's that, the objective. That's right, the but objective. that don't make sense you know, I can see them trying to piecemeal this per lot per right. No, yeah, yeah, cut, right. Yeah, because it's not per lot per right. subdivision. That's so, exactly right. Well technically a lot of subdivision yet but Right, um, right. But yes, their plan is to do all of them the first year. Got it. And, and, and last but not least, you said eight to nine <coughs> subdivisions. Um, can we get a list of those subdivisions? Yeah. Yes, we can get a list of them. Okay, yes, so, so I, I'm just curious. I, I know a couple of them are, but I didn't, I didn't realize it was eight to nine of them. Uh, but I can go back in that 2009 and eight, nine when this kind of started mm -hmm. to occur. And these are the last ones. So what happened was they built all the infrastructure. Yes. You know, the roads, storm sewer, water right. sewer, got got right the final flat stopped. Right. Um, yep. And, and and does any of these subdivisions fall in the city? Not in this agreement, no. There was one, but I think they finished that subdivision. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they replaced the pipes and so there was one in the city. Okay, because well, that's why my concern was with, with whether or not this included those kinds, yeah, but you're saying? does not. Okay, so that particular one that you're speaking of, uh, that was in the city, they've already replaced it through the city, whatever they agreed upon. Yeah, the, the developer. Right. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay, all right. Um, I'll leave it at that. I'll go back. Okay. Move on to the next one. Thank you so much, Pat. Number seven. Um, Judge Walker, authorization to renew the contract of business information systems incorporation for the DIS digital reporting system maintenance and DCMI <coughs> software assurance license for the juvenile courtrooms in the amount of $3,413. Judge Walker. This is our annual update of our technical assistance agreement. We use electronic recording because we do not have access to two court reporters. It's very difficult these days to get two court reporters. So we have one court reporter in one courtroom. We use the electronic system in the other courtroom. And this is just our annual maintenance agreement. It's always been in the budget, remains in the budget. 
but it is more appropriate for the Board of Commissioners to sign that agreement than me, because I really have no authority to do that. Any questions from the Board? Commissioner Gardner. Yes, Judge. Um, you said something that kind of turned a little flag on in my brain here. Um, are you saying that you don't necessarily have a court reporter, they just transcribe from the tapes? Correct. So um, you can do that in any courtroom? I can't say what other courtrooms uh, allow and don't allow because a lot of it depends on what's happened in terms of the adequacy of the record on appeal. We have no problems with being able to use electronic recording in most of our chins cases, in most of our delinquent cases. We are still using a court reporter on dependency and termination cases because those records are much longer and much more complex. But uh, they, um, you can alleviate, it, it seems like you're going down the road where we may can alleviate the need of a court reporter other than transcribing the That is the direct, that's the direction the field is moving in, is that the recordings would be electronic, but the transcription would be by court reporter. I used to transcribe for a court reporter in my younger days and they had to record it and then I transcribed from there. So it, it went through two people, you know. So um, I can see this might save some money down the road. Well, let, let me jump in. The juvenile court is a special breed and Judge Walker does a great job. What's different is that's a closed <coughs> record unless it goes up on appeal, one thing, but number two, you know, in the state, in the Superior Court, for instance, civil cases, those court reporters are being funded by the lawyers, for the clients over there. Uh, you have to provide it for criminal cases because it's, it's, so they have a right to appeal, they have a right to a transcript. And what the clerk of court, unless they change the law, is doing, or excuse me, the court board is doing, is certifying under oath that the words on this paper are the words that came out of that courtroom What's different about this system is they just have to have some mechanism in these kinds of cases to prove what that some that a hearing actually happened, that something happened, and here's what that it can go to. So the system is a little bit different right now, and why I agree, Electronic School Board went to this a while back, where they did the tribunals electronically rather than have a court board come. But the rules haven't been changed in Superior Court to change how, how that goes down in State Court. One, because of volume, and two, some of that load is being carried by the parties because they're having to split the cost of that court board sitting there. Otherwise, they don't transcribe. If you go to a civil hearing this morning on a divorce or whatever, the court board is asking the people there, do you want this transcribed? And they have to make arrangements for, for payment. In the criminal context, they have to record everything. And state and superior court, same with the state court. But, but digital record yeah. is. I think this is a great system we all have, though, and I, you know, it's a cheap cost. <laughs> the bottom line is this: everything that occurs in juvenile court is at your expense. So this is saving y'all an expense in my mind, rather it than is. having a live person there. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Right, we're going to move on to the next um, tab, tab number eight, authorization. Thank you so much, Judge Walker. Thank you. Uh, tab number eight, authorization to apply for the Continuation of Violence Against Women Act, uh, granted the amount of $71,799 through the Criminal Justice Coordinating System and authorize the chairman to sign all necessary documents. Uh, Lynn. Yes. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a grant that we've had since 2014, and it goes to our domestic violence prosecutors. So we are required a 25% match, but we've had it since 2014, so we've been able to do that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, tab number nine, authorization to a authorized authorize a continuance of the temporary moratorium on the acceptance of applications for the review of rezonings for acceptance and redevelopment or should I say development plans and issuance of development special use and building permits for rock quarries and related uses until suggested code changes can be heard by the planning and zoning 
board on February 5th, 2019. Um, Manager Roberts, that was a mouthful. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Uh, sorry that, that that item is so lengthy. I, I guess what, I'm, what we need to do here is actually extend this moratorium for 90 days. Um, okay. In, in regards to uh, letting, we have a, a PNZ meeting actually February 5th and also March 5th, and at either one of those meetings that they could hit their code changes. The issue uh, that we're having in, in making the, the, the changes is they're, the attorney that we're working with is having trouble finding some an expert that can weigh in on, on some components of the change. Mm -hmm. um, they have gone to the private se sector, some consultants and things like that, tried to, to uh, uh, have uh, have that discussed, and they're having difficulty. So then now they're looking at um, some colleges, professors, things like that, trying to get the appropriate. Um, yeah, and let me kind of weigh in on that. Sure. The, the issue with that is this: the private sector is concerned about helping us on this because then they would be conflicted out on presenting private parties that pay them a lot more money, and so we're going to academia because we have to have a educated professional basis for what we're doing mm -hmm. now the agenda item says until it can be heard on february 5th 2019 but i want to make it clear the resolution is to extend the moratorium 90 days it's our goal for it to be heard on february 5th 2019 but the reason why we're doing it 90 days if for some reason that meeting fails due to a natural disaster and we have to reschedule it i want to make sure y'all know y'all aren't extending to february 5th you're extending 90 days but we're, our goal is to bring something to P&Z to pass over a uh, uh, recommendation to y'all at that meeting on February 5th, 2019. Okay? Okay. So we need to make sure that the, the actual resolution is 90 days okay. out, not February 5th, 2019. Right, thank you. That's why I was going to see, make that change today. Good. Okay, any questions from the board? Right. Sounds pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much. Um, Robert, you have one more, tab number 10. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, so we wanted to uh, advertise for a public hearing to discuss the changes uh, to our ordinance section 327. Um, this is to more align us with what the city of Douglasville does and in, in regards to uh, certifying uh, the servers um, that serve alcohol. And so the proposed changes are behind me on the board. Basically, these individuals have to go, they have to go to do the background check, and then they have to come downstairs and get their laminate, and then they, there's a RAS certification that we require where the city does not, and that's an extra $30 as well. So um, uh, currently the licenses, meaning the owners of the restaurants that serve alcohol, have to do, they pay for that cert same certification every two years. So they're actually going and getting certified with the RAS, which is uh, Responsible Alcohol uh, Sales and Service Training. Mm -hmm. So they're actually going through that and paying for that. And so this change would eliminate the need for the servers to have to pay for that. And instead would be able to do, like I said, what the city of Douglasville currently does, which is they take a, a, a written exam and there's, it saves them $30 a year for that, for that change. So that's what we'd be doing, opening up the public hearing. Um, not not this time, but just advertising for it in the, in the future. Okay. I have any questions from the board? Look like you have a question, Commissioner Bradley. And I can just kind of speak a little bit about <laughs> the history of this. Uh, some of our uh, county um, restaurants that serve alcohol just, you know, kind of had questions why it can't be near the uh, Douglasville uh, policy that they have in place or their concept. So, and that was worth discussing. So I brought this to. Manager Roberts and asking you to look into it to see what it meant. Uh, would it have an impact on our revenue? Absolutely not. That thirty dollars will not because we. It, it goes, goes to the. Goes we have TRV and in in VD, right. Madam Chair, that do the testing. So, so that, we're doing away with the fast training. Is that what you're saying? Mm, no, it's it's required, but not every year. Like the, the uh, other employees, or should I say, the other places in the county, those employees have been required to take. Uh, take the test every year mm -hmm. and the city I believe once you take it once you're good but the the, the I guess the manager or whoever uh, this is the owner yes the, the licensee owner, they take the test every two years right yes ma'am okay. so we'll, we'll I guess we'll advertise for that then okay okay all right 
Well, thank you. We'll move on to the next task, tab number 11. Authorization uh, for EMS transport rate increase based on the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee. Yes, ma'am. Uh, our Fire and EMS Committee have, have revisited our EMS rates uh, for the last several meetings. And uh, we have a recommendation that we increase our rates. Uh, and uh, you should have it in your packet for a basic life support uh, ambulance trip. Uh, it would increase $10 for an advanced life support one, which uh, is uh, it's based on the number of advanced procedures we do. So this uh, that would increase by fifty dollars, an advanced life support two, which would be additional procedures, would increase by seventy four dollars, and then our overall mileage rate would increase by a dollar a mile. Okay. Any questions from the board of commissioners? Chief, I will commission the guy who's the chairman of that uh, fire. Uh, Chief, this is to bring it up to the surrounding county. Well, uh, uh, and more in line with the surrounding county. What, what we were trying to do is get as close to the national average as we could, and we looked at that, uh, and we're we're. Then we looked at Georgia. And then we looked at Georgia. Yes. Uh, this brings us up. In, to in Georgia to Georgia yes. standards. So we didn't go all the way up. No, no, we didn't go all the way up to the national. Okay. Just so. to clarify that. Okay. Commissioner Gotti just clarified that this would be Georgia standards. She's the chairman of the Fire and EMS Committee. And also, I have just one question. It's my understanding that this is just so we could make sure that it, from a reimbursement component from the insurance companies, not would it would it have a impact on our citizens could you talk about that would they have to pay more or is just for reimbursement purposes from the insurance carrier uh it's mainly from insurance okay just uh, make sure they understand it, yeah. the uh and uh i talked with uh, finance this morning uh confirming what we had, had the the numbers that our uh, uh amb had given us or the folks that do our collections for us and based on the payer mix and the, uh, uh, which they were based on the national average rates, uh, the, the estimated uh, revenue would be about $74,000 a year, but that's gonna be plus or minus depending on the payer mix, which can change, you know, from, from month to month. So it, 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 will, it will help us some. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Vice Chairman Johnson. Yeah, just, just, just general question so on average, <clears throat> on average how many um and i know this is probably like with the corner um you don't know the volume goes over time but on average how how many trips do we have per year uh we are on average for this year to have about a uh, seventeen thousand calls countywide 80 percent of that seventeen thousand will be ems related uh, realize too that we can only charge if we transport only we so there, there are a lot of those calls that we go out on and we don't transport so there is no charge oh so if you just show up and I've got some type of um, high blood pressure you <coughs> stabilize me right I mean just whatever right okay um all right that's the first question so uh, director Hallman how much money does this generate for us in general I believe the estimates. Michelle, you want to talk? Do you mind sure. talking about this? Thank you. <laughs> 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 My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning. There are a number of factors depending on the type of transport, the type of insurance an individual has. Uh, what the, our billing company did is they looked at a year's history of our payer mix, um, whether it was Medicare, Medicaid, or, or private insurances, or self-pay, and they estimate if we went to the national average, it might yield as much as $74,000 increase a year uh, that could go up or down with that payer mix. And because we are um, coming in slightly lower than the national average, it may be a little less than that. 
So an increase of 74,000, and maybe you said in your open comments, and I just blinked, but how much does it generate today? I mean, 74,000 is the increase? It's the increase. This amount? Yes. All right, so what is the amount today prior to going to this increase? How much do we generate? Oh, oh annual, annual. 2.1 million, is it? Say again, please. 2.1 million is what we generate. Okay. And then the $74,000 is a projected cash increase. Our revenue may be more, but because of uncollectibles, the $74,000 was a cash. No, I appreciate that. No, that's what I want. I'm trying to get more of a magnitude. You've answered the question. I yield back up here. Okay. <coughs> Michelle, you could just respond a little more about the that, that reimbursement component that's from the insurance carrier. So to allow the citizens to understand that it will have a minimum minimum impact on them because we I don't believe we've been being reimbursed on or paying what we should pay I guess for these trips can you explain it a little more help me well um, the impact to an individual would vary with their insurance where they're at with meeting their deductibles and what type of how their plan um, covers the majority of our transports. However, our Medicare, Medicaid, and they won't be affected by this at all because we're a Medicare provider. We accept what Medicare pays, and then um, there is no balance billed to the individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Good job. Good job. Oh, just one comment. comment. Just remember that any additional revenue or revenue we get, or we receive from ambulance fees, is a direct uh, impact positive impact if it goes up to our general fund because of, because of service delivery we take the fire and EMS funds budget we divide it by two half of that gets funded from the general fund less what we collect in ambulance revenue so if we collect in more rev revenue for ambulances that's less of an impact to the general fund mm -hmm. okay. good job again oh. good job thank you thank you fire and, fire and EMS committee mm -hmm. that's great all right next um Chief, you have number 12. You have number 12 authorization to purchase the superior software upgrade for the mock MAC alerting system for the um, digital radio system in the amount of $23,600 to be funded through the 2016 loss bonds as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee. Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, th this has to do with the new uh, 800 radio system. Uh, in order for the fire stations to be alerted from this new system, we need this software component that ties into the current CAD system. Um, there's a lot of work that goes in to making sure all the streets are in there, uh, that they are pronounced correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and so what our 911 center has asked us to do is get this uh, approved so they can go ahead and start doing their part of the work on this system so that when the, the whole system comes online, we'll be ready to go. Okay. Any questions for the board, Commissioner Barry? I uh, just wanted to point out, uh, Chief, uh, the radio system is under budget as of right now, yes, even with this uh, addition here. Um, do you want to elaborate on that? About uh, some figures, but it is about five hundred thousand. Uh, off the top of my head, Commissioner, I, I don't remember. It, it, it's a significant savings, though. Uh, not you know, saying we, we are under budget. Mm -hmm. And you also went to Chicago. Yes, ma'am. Tested the system, and we we did. We went uh the a week or so ago. Uh, and uh, the system tested out fine. Uh, myself and Director Mill Holland, we signed off on the test. Uh, we met with all the technicians up there. We actually saw our radio system working. Uh, uh, we, we sent pictures to, to David to uh, put on the website. Uh, it was very, very impressive. We uh, were super excited about it. Uh, I, I was a little nervous signing because it was like uh, seven and a half million dollars we were signing. So, but uh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. But just to recap, the radio system was necessary that uh, so public safety, that means the fire department, 
and um, the sheriff's office and police that they could communicate with other surrounding counties and that they would also, if you have to go into a house, say in fair play, uh, oftentimes you, under the old system, you were losing connection with the people on the outside. So you couldn't communicate in a burning building. This will allow better communication. Yes, ma'am. This, this, the, the, the contract calls for 95% county-wide coverage 95% of the time in building. So that's the average. So we expect we will have higher than that. But, but it will not be lower than that or they will not have met their contract obligation. So we're very excited about that and that's a great point. Uh, when I send my guys in a building, if I can't talk to them and something happens, the, same way with the sheriff's office. And the sheriff's yeah. office is the same. Is, uh, the other thing this system allows us to do is communicate between departments, uh, uh, both in the county and outside the county. Mm -hmm. It's a very complex system, and I feel like we've been working on radios for about the last year. <laughs> and the new towers are going up as we the, speak. We have uh, three towers that have are uh, four towers that have already been completed the one at 911 the one at uh, fire station 5 which is chapel hill fire station 11 which is 92 north uh, the bell art ballpark was completed on friday jason mm -hmm. uh, and the next one that will be completed by the end of this week will be at fire station 8 out in mirror lake uh, the rest of them will will they'll start building on after the first of the year, which will be the Austell gas system down in Lithia Springs, uh, the uh, factory shoals side as we call it off Shoal School Road, mm -hmm. and uh, then the the last site we have to acquire is uh, in the Fair Play area, and mm -hmm. that's being worked on now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner <coughs> Robinson, you comment. Yeah, just, just. A comment. So, and again, just, just hear, hear, hear the context and hear the heart of what I'm saying. Now, now, again, I'm, I'm listening to the numbers. And we have, it, it sounds like we've, um, a great project. Definitely need it, but I'm, I'm following the money. And I, I go back to, in some instant, in some parts of this floss, we underestimated what costs were. And, and in certain cases, perhaps we overestimated. Right? It's all relative. Right? And as I look at this excess, that these savings, and whether it's, 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 it's true or not, in other words, well, the savings is the savings, because that was something that we, we set aside. Right? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, we, we spent, think about, it, 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 we we got to just do better in our estimation so that you know we get into this um, adoption of the budget. So if I take ten million dollars out of my general fund to pay for some land, I spend a hundred million dollars on the jails per us lost, which is hard cost. Of the twenty million dollars just for additional costs such as um, consultants and so forth, I add another twenty million dollars. Right, and and so I'm looking at this and I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, but. I can't use the excess of that to go get cars that impacts my general fund that pro prohibits or puts a constraint on salary increases, pensions, etc. Right? The general fund is sort of a scarce place. Right? It's something that you should protect, and it, it should it, there should be a, a it, it's your bloodline. It's the thing that you need to really make sure that it's it's <coughs> When you have a SPLOS, I, I think that the SPLOS is, is like capital. It allows you to go do some heavy lifting. Thank you, General Assembly, for creating that type of funding source. I really appreciate it. But this is just for the record, for those who, the, the, those who will sit at this seat at this table in the future, that they, they recognize that, okay, don't, uh, don't so narrowly define things that you bet everything on just one part of government. Right? It, it, it needs to be inclusive, not exclusively only this. I understand it's important and it's a priority. But I'm looking at the spin, and I'm like, and, it, and, and I get it. I'm just, I'm cringing because it's like, ah, oh, it, it, it bothers me that we didn't have additional capacity 
to pick up some of these other things. So it's just something that, again, while, guys, I celebrate it, I, I, I appreciate the good work, I appreciate the due diligence, I appreciate all of that, but at the same point, it's not either or, it's like we also have to uh, recognize uh, what we could not do. So just for the record, Madam Chair, uh, okay. I yield. Okay. All right, I'll move on to, thank you so much, uh, Chief. <coughs> All right, uh, tab number 13, authorization to accept reimbursement from the Georgia Environmental Protection Division, having this waste trust fund in amount of $37,210.25, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Jenkins, I saw you earlier. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I guess it's still morning. Yes, good morning. Yeah, it's still there. Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, we do this for about five years. There is a fund that the state EPD sets up for various uh, tasks. A uh, scrap tire fund, maybe, uh, cleanup of hazardous waste sites. In this particular uh, situation here, we monitor groundwater and we monitor methane at our landfill. Mm -hmm. And if it has just a minute amount of constituents, it's not exactly right, it doesn't pass the, uh, the test, then we can get reimbursed. And it typically runs, <coughs> in this particular case, this one's 37000 It has been up as high as fifty or 60000 So it's a great program. Uh, what we hope for is they don't take that money and use it for something else, like toll roads and that kind of stuff. But that's it in a nutshell, uh, asking for that. and. Uh, for Madam Chair to execute it, there is a uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. Don't require a hearing or anything, just requires the signatures of the district commissioners as well as Madam Chair. Okay. Any questions for the director? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Move on to tab number 14. I'll finish. I don't see it. Uh, I'll direct you to it. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Um, thank you, to, uh, Director Holman. Authorization to amend the Board of Elections budget to cover elections expenses for the runoff election and revenue for the portion of these expenditures to be paid by the cities of Douglasville and Villa Rica. Uh, Director Holman. Yes. Um, as you know, we had a runoff, and so uh, with that, there's additional expenses that occurred. Um, we are going to be billing the city of Douglasville just under twenty thousand, and the city of Villarica a little over six thousand. So the net impact to our general fund um, is just under fifty thousand. Um, Milton you couldn't be with us today, so he just asked that I bring this before y'all and ask to amend this budget uh, for this runoff. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Mole here. Yeah, I was uh, recent. ACCG uh, board of managers meeting, and it will be continue to be one of their initiatives. Uh, to modify our, our runoff requirements mm -hmm. uh, to what is typical across the United States. We're one of a, we're one of a handful of states that requires a 50% plus one uh, limit on electing someone to office. And uh, they're going to run back at the General Assembly and see if we can get that modified to whoever gets 45% or more. And it will save the counties and cities a lot of money uh, across the state. Mm -hmm. So I yield back. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Moore here. Thank you, Director uh, Holman. I'll move on to the next item. Uh, tab number 15, we already covered. Tab number 16. Madam I'll Chair, it, it may I <coughs> say something about 15? It, it, the way it's written it talks about roads. There are some design standards that they're looking to have variants from that are not what was discussed strictly. And some of, some of which um, I have no issue with, some of which I do. So as it moves forward, I'd like the opportunity to have input into it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Ellen. <coughs> Director. All right. Next, we'll move on to tab number 16, authorization to renew professional services agreements and, and MOU for services for the state court DUI um, drug court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Good morning, Good morning. Anita Granger. Good morning. Um, these are just... Uh, all of these PSAs and um, MOUs, there's two MOUs. One is for um, our counselor, that is Ascension Counseling and Mental Health. 
um, that that has not changed other than a 4% increase in the fees that we're paying. Um, most of those um, fees are paid through date funds and or grant funds and some participant fees as well. Um, the PSAs are for our people that come in and collect the urine screens for us in the morning. Um, those remain essentially the same with a slight increase in their fees as well. Um, there is a new MOU <coughs> for a um, new lab that we're using. They're called EverHealth or otherwise known as EverTest LLC. Um, they are um, they are saving us money in the long run for our drug screening. Those are also paid through grant funds and um, date funds if they need to be supplemented so they don't affect the um, general fund. Um, EverHealth has um, we're all electronic now, so the chain of custodies and the um, requisitions are um, unquestionable in, in a court if there's anything that needs to go to court. So it's, a, it's really been a good change. The staff is very excited about it. And like I said, overall, it's saving us money in the long run. So um, those are good things. So if you have any, I mean, I've got the copies. I believe legal has them all. I've sent them all to Ms. Moore for um, them to look at to make sure that there's nothing that needs to be changed in them. But again, these are all, other than EverHealth, the other four are all the people that are still currently working for us this year. You all know, approved them last year, and I, it's my understanding that I have to come back every year with a new contract, so that's why I'm here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mrs. Granger? <coughs> thank you. Great, thank, thank you so much. Y'all awesome. have a very Merry Christmas. And you too, thank you. Tab number 17, authorization to adopt the 2019 state and federal legislative agenda. Uh, Director Stanley. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so before you today is the 2019 uh, state and federal legislative agenda. Um, this um, document, as, long as, as well as the other information, was presented to our state legislators on November the 30th. Um, and the document includes... 15 state legislative priorities, um, 14 of them are listed in your book, plus an additional author, um, legislative priority that was added by Commissioner Mitchell. Um, so we have 15 of those. I don't know if you guys want me to go over them in detail in the interest of time, but we're just asking to adopt the state and federal legislative agenda in order to move forward um, this year in the, uh, at the Capitol. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yeah, Madam Chair. Uh, Vice Chair Robson, you have Yeah, so all we're doing is just passing a resolution of adoption. That's in the New York. And that's really Yes. It. There's no action to be taken by us. So what comes out of this, just for the record, sure. what, we passed this resolution, uh, uh, these items, and what does the state do, just for the sure. record? So pretty much what this is, is, it's like the playbook for the county or my um, legislative marching orders. So when I go down to the county, I'm sorry, to the capital, um, and when I go to DC, these are the thing or the things that the county is or will be pushing as priorities. So it simply just gives it lets our legislators know that these are the things that are important to the Board of Commissioners and to Douglas County, and any bills or legislation that would fall within those categories, or they already will know that those are things that the county supports or we don't support. And just for clarity, so when the um, our local delegation met with us. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about the county's priorities. This is really just the board commissioner's priorities. Because, That's correct. Uh, there are other priorities that may come out of other constitutional offices, other jurisdictions, yes. etc. Is that accurate? <laughs> that is correct. And one of the things that I do when I compile this book, I do reach out to all of our uh, constitutional officers and all our department heads to get their input. So a lot of what they ask for is similar to what's in the book, but they some of them do have their own separate priorities as well as the city of Douglasville and the Board of Education, but they all have given me copies of that um, so we can just kind of have everything um, together. I just want to clarify, this is just what the five of us are interested in. Yes. But it, it is not to um, constrain the thoughts and, and desires and, and, and needs of the other areas. I That's correct. Thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions? I'll move on to the next one. Thank you so much for this family. And I must add a lot of the items that you have. We have the 2018 were accomplished in That's 2018. Right. So thank you for standing on the wings for us at the uh, Capitol. Uh, tab number 18, authorization to accept the Keep America Beautiful Door Sale 9 Vote Battery Grant. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, ma'am. Um, so uh, back in August, um, Keep America Beautiful and uh, Duracell had a grant where they were offering nine vote batteries to the community. <coughs> I did apply for the grant, and we were awarded 
batteries. Um, this will be beneficial. <laughs> this will be beneficial to the Douglas County community because if you go in any store, these batteries just for two of them, they're like seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. So they average about three dollars and seventy-five cents a battery. So this would be a benefit to the Douglas County community over three hundred forty thousand um, dollars. I've been working with our fire department. Uh, we will be packaging the batteries and giving them out in sets of threes like this. Keep Douglas County Beautiful has a, a host of activities planned for next year in order to be able to give these batteries. We have actually will be having a battery replacement event in February where we'll be exchanging batteries. We have some cleanups scheduled for March and April where we will also be offering batteries. And also in January, we'll be partnering with Home Depot and the landfill. And we'll be, um, people will be able to bring their Christmas trees and we'll be giving them seeds and batteries in return. So we just ask that you guys accept this grant so that we can give these batteries to the community. Okay. Is it 90, you said 92,000? It's 92,400 batteries. Okay, Commissioner, mm -hmm. do you have a comment? Yeah, just, okay, I can't even fathom. Where are any batteries at? Where they're any? in the bottom, they're in the bottom of the building right now. We just got them about, a, I want to say about a, two weeks ago, maybe. All right, no, I, I just, okay, so we have, there are literally 90,000 batteries. Mm -hmm. um, how many um, homes do we have in the county? 50,000, 60,000. I'm just trying to get a order back. Well, I'll tell, well I'll, I will say this, Commissioner Robinson. We we're going to give them out three at a time, and okay. Keep Douglasville Beautiful was also awarded about 36,000 batteries. Okay. And I received a call from Deputy Chief Zachemeyer last week saying they've already given most of those out. There is a demand for these batteries. Okay. So we, 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 we definitely have so, people who want them. All right. So, uh, again, just trying to recognize that everybody doesn't follow us, everybody doesn't get. You know, we've got 15,000 people part of our what's happening email distribution. There's always people who just are not in the loop. And I, I want to, you know, whether it's through stores, I mean, everybody got to go to the grocery store. The majority of people have um, what we want to call children go to school, right? I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do we really get these out? Um, and are they only used to be used for smoke detectors or are people getting them for toys? I mean, what, what's the purpose? The, the purpose is for smoke detectors smoke. and carbon monoxide detectors, I believe. But if, I mean, you can use them for, I guess, anything that a 9-volt battery will be, you can be used for. I, I, just for clarity, just for, for the record, 90,000, it's just not come get a graph to sort of replenish. Right. You know, it, yeah. it really had a purpose, and I just yes. wanted to drive home that point. Yes. Um, and just trying to see if you've got 120,000 batteries, just 50,000 houses here, I don't know how many apartments. I was just trying to get a feel for how, how much coverage would that be. but I. I think I got what I needed. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, if I may, and I normally don't talk to this point, but if there is excess batteries, um, I can tell you one of the biggest needs at Operation Christmas is these kids getting toys and they don't have batteries. And a lot of people that donated toys take batteries to them. But if there becomes excess that's just sitting, I'm sure uh, the elf squad would love to put those in kids' mm -hmm. toys, uh, whether it be in this year or next year, but just if there's excess. I know that has another purpose potentially, but if, there, if it becomes, but well, they're going to get wasted, let us know, please. It is Well, some, 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 some toys, not all. Most of them are C's or D's, but it, I, we can't take 90,000 nine volts because most things, but you know, nowadays these, uh, what do you call those things that hover? Well, drones. 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 Some drones, believe it or not, can take the nine boat. Some, the, the smaller children type drones. I'm not talking about ones that fly around and interfere with planes and stuff. But there might be a need for some of the batteries if y'all have a, if, if they're just going to be lost. Mm -hmm. so are you still taking donations to it? We're not advertising that, but we are taking donations, son. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Director Stanley. I appreciate you. this 90,000 batteries because we are really lucky. Some counties applied for these batteries and didn't get them. So we, we did uh, secure yes. this grant. So thank you yeah. so much. And we have had offers from other counties. If we don't use them all, Cobb County specifically has asked to get our excess. So, <laughs> so, so a lot of counties didn't receive the grant, but they have definitely been watching our batteries in case we don't use them. So thank you, Chief, for helping us. Yes, all right, we'll move on to the next item, tab number 19, authorization to award the bid for concrete materials uh, to Wayne Davis Concrete for the period from January 2019 to December 31st, 2019. Um, Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We uh, submitted a uh, request for bid 
Uh, we received one response back, and that was from Wayne Davis, our local concrete uh, contractor. Uh, and uh, their prices increased by about 5% over the prior year. They were our prior year uh, vendor as well. So we're just recommending that um, you accept the, the prices from Wayne Davis for concrete for next year. Okay. We have a question from the board. I can move on to the next one. Tab number 20 authorization to approve an increase in architectural and engineering fees to be paid to Carter Watkins Associates Incorporation in the amount of $90,502 due to the increase in size and scope of the new Douglas County Senior Center in, du in Lithia Springs and authorize the chairman to sign all uh, documents subject to legal review. Uh, and this is a revisit from our last work session. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. The senior center footprint and the services and the, and the, the structure itself has changed fairly dramatically from what the original <coughs> scope was. And because of that, uh, I think there's a, Mark, how much is the additional expense over the initial cost? Is it? Um, Five percent of that amount is ninety thousand five hundred two. Okay, so there's an amount of money that's that that has increased from what the initial cost estimate was, uh, and so now we uh, we are recommending that the county um, accept the fact that the fees should be increased for the architect that's working on the uh, on the project, so that he can do all of the um, swimming pool um, engineering and, uh, and uh, design as well as the different other facilities that have been added to what the original uh, footprint was for that building. So we're recommending that the, the county uh, approve this fee increase. Okay. Any questions from the board? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson? Yeah. <coughs> okay. and, and so this is a recommendation from the committee or just something that was just brought forth? For it's a recommendation from the Parks and Rec Committee. So, so, and I, I, again, when I heard the scope creep, um, it, it was added for this footprint, which, which I'm good with. Uh, it's, and I think boundary waters, like the, that was different than this one because this is a deliberate, we want to expand it to meet the needs of the people. So the design increases by 5%, so I'm assuming that, or relatively, I'm, I'm okay with whatever the number it is, which means perhaps the cost of construction will increase relatively, Based on that, I mean, is that the following logic? Mr. Till can give you the. Well, what happened was, so the original square footage was like fourteen five or fourteen that they that they submitted. It was included in the RFP. <coughs> yep. Was a result of the community meetings. So there was some additional space that was added. I think now the facility is around eighteen thousand square feet. So the cost estimate increased based on bigger size. Okay. Okay. I'm just following the logic. So community input that gave validation for this increase. So, and the committee is comfortable with that, right? Yes, sir. Do we understand what the estimate of it? This is for the design, though, right? This is for him this to finish. Is, this part is for the design. Just the design. Yes. And the uh, engineering. Total cost of the project, including design, mm -hmm. contingency, everything is still under budget. Yeah. Okay. Guys, that's just an estimate. We haven't gone out to do it. No, that's okay. This was just for design. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Geyer. Um, I'm going to say something, and I know it will go through over some people's heads, and some people don't want to hear it, but um, the way this flush with the um, parts and wrecks is being handled, it appears as though this Board of Commissioners has abandoned half of this county. Uh, nothing from Fair, uh, Chapel Hill Road West is being funded according to Mark. They will run out of funds before, probably before they finish Bill Arp. You got Bart, Bill Arp, Fair Play, Post Road, and Winston. Y'all are getting the Cadillac and we're getting nothing. Is way it appears to the public in the 4th District. And when I say the 4th District, it, you know, it includes Mirror Lake, Fair play, part of the city of Douglasville. The the mall is in my district. And y'all are asking people to buy local, yet when they see something like this, they're saying, why? 
y'all have abandoned, y'all are spending all these splash funds for Parks and Rec on the western side of the county getting the very best. You're getting not just one in the um, um, youth center, you're not getting just one basketball court, you're getting two. Uh, in, in the senior center, you're getting um, now an indoor pool that's going to cost from, from here at this point forward, once the pool is built, it's going to cost the taxpayers for this county. I'm ashamed of this board for what you're doing. I'm ashamed of y'all. Y'all have completely ignored the necessary replacements or repairs <coughs> to the parks on the western side of the county. And when I say the western side of the county, it's almost half the county. <coughs> because uh, y'all are just putting all the funds and you're doing it the Cadillac side. You're, you're giving the very best, the most expensive, and leaving nothing, absolutely nothing, for the people that's having to pay for this. Shame on you. And that I yield. Okay. Any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you. Question or Yeah. It's the end of the year. I'll, I'll, I'll be you sensitive. Yeah, I'll be good. Uh, it, 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 but, but she brings up a good point. It, it goes hand in hand. It goes back to priority of, of perhaps administration. My citizens made it clear during my public hearing, uh, usually with transportation and economic development the past seven years, but I actually tracked them. I asked them. But this year, they actually went with parks and rec uh, as being a priority and community development, uh, specific public health, which is consistent with, with the, again, I'm just one vote district too. But to your point, Think about administration, it's about policy. If the prior administration just only wanted to put everything in one thing, public safety, think about the, um, national defense, that was your priority. Now we're swinging it back a little bit the other way to say, okay, but what about the people, right? So I, it, it's, it's an ebb and flow. So I appreciate the, the, the commentary. I mean, it's okay, I, I'll accept that. But, but it's a balancing act, right? We're not ashamed of the fact that, okay, well, what did you do during that period of time? That was my whole premise of laying out, like, look how we spent the money. We took Jennifer, general fund from 17 million to 7 million cash to buy some land for the jail, right? You could have took some of that and did some of the things you talked about, right? So you, you, gotta, you gotta step back sometime and say, okay, let's look at what we really did. It can't just be convenient about what the other side has done all of a sudden, right? It, what, what contributed to, 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 to the current state of Parks and Rec, right? There's a balancing act. It's about having a, a balanced appropriation of funds. I'm okay, I'm for defense, I'm for public safety, but not all eggs in one balance, on one basket. And this boss, at least it's balanced, it's spread out. And so I won't belabor it. I, I, I think you get my point, which is, yeah, I hear you, but you duly noted, but we, we, we recognize that. You have a committee structure, right? Everybody gets to weigh in. Um, you can always, you know, if you want to override some, go find you three votes, go find two more. But, but in the meantime, it's just like, but there, there is input. I, I get it, right? Um, but, and I, I don't... Yeah, let's just leave it at that, Madam Chair. I yield. <coughs> Good enough. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next item. All right, we'll move on. Um, the next item we have is tab number 21, authorization to award a contract to the Intercontinental Commercial Services Incorporation for professional janitorial services for the uh, Douglas County Courthouse for a total annual cost of $63,000 in authorized chairman to sign all related documents. And this is another revisit from the last book session. Director Peacock? We're, we're going to ask that this be tabled, or not tabled, but <coughs> pushed to the next um, okay. agenda session. Mm -hmm. The plan is that we're going to um, meet with the top four uh, submitters mm -hmm. to uh, determine, uh, to make sure that the, the, the pricing is correct and that they're in, they are in, uh, in fact able to provide the services. Okay. 
Thank you for that. Madam mm -hmm. Chair? Doesn't, doesn't our process address that, though? Aren't, aren't they given requirements here? You're going to do A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then they respond to how they're going to charge the county for doing A, B, C, D, and F? Yes, sir. So what is this? Why are we doing this meeting? It's at the request of the commission. I'll tell you why it's the question. Let me, let me speak to it. This, Please do. This price is a little low. Um, compared to what we had in the previous years. Uh, we usually it's been hovering about 103000 per year for the, this janitorial contract. This contract is coming in at 63. It sounds good, it may be too good. It, it, it sounds so good, it may be too good to be true. So therefore, I wanted to deep, take a deeper dive. Commissioner uh, Mitchell had some concern in our last meeting. And we just said, well, you know, let's just look at all four, the top four, and go from there to make it fair. Because it's 63 now. We just hate for this person to say we can't do this for 63000 Because usually these cleaning, cleaning projects are based on square footage. And if you uh, look at the square footage of this courthouse, 108000 is reason is typically what it typically should come in at 108000 not 63000 So I'm just wondering what calculation this person used or what have you. You may want to speak to that. What has been factored into this is the fact that, that the cleaning service is no longer being required to clean the, the old assessor's space nor the tax commissioner's space. So that's not being, that's not in the square footage that's being covered by the, the, the new contract. Um, so the square footage has been reduced because the service will not be, um, cleaning will not be done in those two, two spaces within the, within the courthouse. Commissioner Mitchell, do you want to weigh in a little bit with, uh, with this concern? Okay, I didn't see that. Well, okay. um, who's going to clean those areas? Well, they're not being cleaned because they're not being used. Well, I know, but they're going to be used. So that this contract does not cover all of the courthouse? It does not cover those two locations. Now, once they're back um, functioning and in use, uh, then yes, they'll have to be cleaned and we'll have to modify the contract. But we don't want to pay today. But did the, did the people that bid on this, did they know that? The, the square footage was given to them. So they, they bid on square footage. It's a, based <laughs> on square footage. This doesn't look good. Uh, you know, we put it out to bid. We had responses, what, five bidders? Um, six, I think. Yeah. Five or six, six bidders. We went with the low bidder. I don't. I don't see what the question is. Well, I didn't realize that you. You just mentioned there's a couple of areas that were not incorporated, and that's that probably if that had come out earlier, that would make more sense because some of them you don't have all the square footage in there. Because I understand the calculation for that square footage for courthouses and the square footage of this courthouse, I believe is. Is it twenty thousand? What is the square footage of this courthouse? It's more than that, I believe. But but again, we don't do a lot of cleaning on the court side either. This cleaning service wouldn't, because they're not allowed past a certain point. Uh, so our night cleaning folks clean that. So again, there's a limited amount of space over even on the court side that this cleaning service is going to be taken care of. So this contract does not does not cover all the previous square footage that you had in the other contract. So, yes. you, so you said we would have to go in and just amend it once we incorporate those in. That yes, wasn't clear earlier. Yes, so sir. does that but give you some clarification, Commissioner Mitchell? Well, absolutely. That makes sense I mean, now. I'm like. I agree. Not knowing that that one was included, that's why I asked, if, if, is, is everything included? However, as Commissioner Geiger stated, though, not to include where the tax commissioner exists. That's still going to need to be cleaned. So I think we need to kind of take a holistic look at the entire square foot feet that we're going to be dealing with versus what we're not, and we're going to come back and get that done later. Because once they get, once we build out, whether it's security or however we build this thing out, we still don't have to clean whomever go in that particular space. So to me, I would think you would have it all inclusive to make sure that they know that they will be cleaning that in the future. But if they I, do I, know that. Oh, okay. We just don't want to pay for them. I get today it. Today, it's it. not in use. I, I get it. I, I get that part of it. Okay. And, and, and maybe my numbers wouldn't have came up so drastically <clears throat> different, and I probably wouldn't have had this kind of conversation, but I didn't know all of this didn't exist. Yeah. So, so now it might make a little more sense once I go back and do the math versus what I thought in the beginning as to the math just was too far off. Yes, sir. So. But everybody was given the same square footage to get on. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Right. I thought so. you said they were given the same square footage, but it wasn't the same as the previous contract because mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in the, I, I was still going one way. I'm going to go back and, and verify that point because because Mr. Mark Price actually put that number in the uh, RFP, and I don't have it here in front of me, but I want to make sure that everybody got the right number. But did they get the full number or the reduced number? Right. That's what I don't. I can't 100% speak to. Yeah, let's make sure. sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm listening to y'all. Again, so it doesn't matter if, I, if the number is $20 or $50. They all should be relatively the same. It's all relative, right? And so when I'm looking at the scope of this, I'm like, okay, it's 40, I mean, it's, it's off. Yes. It's so low. And, and so I go back to quality. Low doesn't equal quality. I'm going to bring it right before you guys, the class of 2010 came aboard, or right, right around that period of time, Lithia Springs Park. Remember this? And we went with the low bid because we're trying to save money. We, we, I remember Ken, you had to get involved and learn. I, I got to know Ken about getting involved with bonds and stuff to make them fix that because we, 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 we gave this contract to somebody who just so well, it's going to save us money. I get it, but it, it, it didn't fulfill what we needed. Right? And we knew it was low, but we went with, well, it's the low bid. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to live that experience. So this, to your point, this has to be validated. I don't just have to accept the low bid if I question, to, is it going to get what I need done? That's our whole job. I don't want to be on the other side of this and now I have to go back in to your point. Now we got to redo another contract, a smaller contract to pick up. Like, no. I, I mean, so I, I think the questions are legit by, 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 by my peers to pause, to ask that question, right? To, 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 to just be comfortable and be, be clear. So to your point, I'm listening to it from the last time to this time. Um, much clearer responses from um, Director Peacock. I got it. But there's still a part of this that says, well, we ain't got a shotgun. Nobody, I mean, we want to get it done. But, but I mean, again, sometimes you got, you got five, ten minutes coming here and, and make a compelling argument. And sometimes we, we pause because, okay, something's just not right. Trust our gut. That's our whole point. It's our discretion. Like, mm, something's not right. And the answer keep, keeps coming clear along the way. It's like, okay, it's moving. It's moving. It's being justified along the way. And so, I mean, really does this happen? We make a lot of decisions. I mean, a lot of decisions. So again, every now and then we, we get something that comes along here that you pitch along here, we grab hold to and say, I, I don't know about this. It doesn't challenge the process of the person or any of that. It's just, well, just on this transaction alone, we just, we're not comfortable. <coughs> we don't have to feel bad about it. It's just, well, not quite. So I, on this one, I'm, I'm not certain I want to move forward yet, but I'm, 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 as I've learned, I'm, I'm unsettled about voting on this right now until we get clear. So, but Madam I'm, Chairman, I'll you the to add some more comments or just not? You can add some more comments. What um, I want to do, so you know, I just want to be able to wrap it up, and you said you'll go back and verify that it's based on that uh, I will. reduced uh, square footage. I spent a lot of time with the uh, executive vice president for the company, the vendor that's been recommended, Mr. Kelly Adamson. Uh, his corporation is a huge corporation. They do a lot of different things. He has a thousand, he said, contracts like this for cleaning services across the country. So he, he believes and he assured me that he could do the work that we're asking to have done for the amount of money that he's offered. Having said that, you know, I don't have any, I can't give a 100% guarantee that that's true, but that's what he told me. We also checked all the references of the top four companies. Um, the company that we're recommending got the best, we got the best responses from their references. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you that information so that you'll have it. I'm not trying to sway the decision here. But, but those are the things that we've done to try to add some clarity to whether or not this is the right thing to do or not. Right. And I appreciate the due diligence if you can just make sure it's based off that reduced square footage because it sounds like we will have to come back once we incorporate the old tax commissioner's office that'll be good. So if you could just clarify that, I hope this board is comfortable moving forward, forward because if it's on that reduced square footage, I'm comfortable. I, I concur with you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, we could sit here and establish the policy that, uh, well, let's just go with the second price bid. You, know, <laughs> could, you could be going out on a limb. And you're, you, you bring up a good point about, about Lithia Spring. We chose them uh, based on all the knowledge we had, input, and references. And it turned out to be not the quality work that, that we would like to see. So we could just establish a policy. Let's go with the second highest from now on, and we'll never have that problem. 
I'm being facetious. I have to tell. Okay. Because you you could you could you could have a problem with any one of these vendors, and then you would have to address it, and that's why we have the 30 day get out of the house uh, yeah. uh, part 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 of the contract. Uh, so I would I would like us to see us go, go forward if we're if the chair and and uh, can cooperate with uh, Director Peacock. Yeah, this, just make all sure the numbers reduce, were the same. Yeah, and make correct. sure that reduces any other because but it is a formula out there for square footage on cleaning. I've had my fair share of just digging and doing mm -hmm. some research and it's out there and that one oh eight was pretty close to that formula that's mm -hmm. out there. So if we could just make sure that this person is well aware that it's reduced and then I know they'll come back and we have expectations that he's gonna expect more once that building is up. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable. And this and this is a huge firm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I mean yeah, I just one more time. I get it, guys, but it's almost like 40% difference. Like, you got that type of scale? Say with me. You that efficient? I'm stay with you. Yeah, you, you, you're that efficient? You're that efficient that everybody else is, it's, it's sort of a distribution is usually, and I'm gonna put my statistic out there. Distribution is pretty much in the middle. It's the norm, right? Now you got this outlier that's so far off, it's like, okay, that's an outlier. Hmm. It's like, hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I keep looking like, okay, um, it, it's one of those where all things being equal, it just seems to be a little bit off. And so now I'm going to look at the operation, like, okay, are you that efficient? I, I appreciate that. I mean, are you just giving this that cost? I just want to get the contract. I just want to undermine it. It could be a loss leader. It's like, I, so I'm back to the quality. I, I, and so while y'all work on square feet, I'm like, I'm back to quality. I know what I experienced back in with, with, with that car. And so I, I, I just know when I feel something this far off, it's not plus or minus five or ten percent. It's an order of magnitude. That's my issue. But I'm willing to let y'all go do your homework again. I'll go with the majority. I, I, I'll, I'll be prepared to vote when it's time, but I'll respectfully yield the floor. Thank you. Ma ma Madam Chair, this only cost I give is this. If the bid numbers are out, the, the bid requirements allow y'all to reject any and all bids, I'm assuming, and Bill confirm that for me. I think the information flow needs to go through Bill because if there becomes a dialogue that is outside of the bid requirements, there, there could be some problems down range. So I'd just be very cautious, Bill. I know you know how to do it, but let Bill give y'all whatever information you need. Mm -hmm. When there's dialogue after the bids are exposed, that could lead to a problem. Okay. So we, he knows what to do. Okay. Got it. Right. Just, just, one, just one comment to this. So this particular item, it appears that we, you're, you're moving forward, so it'll be on the agenda item for tomorrow. Am I correct? Or are you, are you saying we're pausing? Where are we going with this particular item? If the square footage has been reduced, I mean, if this is based on the reduced square footage, we're going to go forward. If not, we need to table it and then look at it uh, a little more. Um, and that'll allow our director to make sure he made this information very clear to those four bidders because it's reduced. They may not be aware that it's reduced. We just want to make sure everybody understands. Everybody is um, saying the same thing. We all mm -hmm. talk in the same language or speak in the same language. Okay. So right. it's just based on what, uh, when he get back with me, Director Peacock will let us know today. Mm -hmm. And if, 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 if it's not correct, Lisa will remove it in the detail. Yes. Okay. And that's what you need. Well, that's so, I'm good. So I'm only saying though, so however, because first of all, I got to go back and look what I looked at and, and I got to see what he's got. Don't know when that information will possibly come up with it at the end of the day. If we're going to do that though, take your, your direction and let's pull this off and let it be a separate, not a consent agenda vote. Right. Okay. We can do that. Okay. All right. So point of work to that point. So there's no presentation. Right. I mean, I was looking forward to at least get my quality question answered. By, like, okay, let me let me let me look the guy in the eye and ask my typical set of questions. Like, okay, you telling me that you can deliver this, and me being able, you you. So there's a, and again, it, it's 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 not enough money, perhaps, for me to for you know sort of suggest that we just bring them in. But uh, I thought that's what I was hearing that we at least wanted to pause enough to have the presentation, get the clarity on the data, and so forth. But it sounds like okay, we're just so urgent about getting this done. I'll yield to the majority of, of, of you guys I, I, again. To your point, take it off to take it off consent. We go from there. One more comment: We have extended uh, our current vendor for another 60 days. Okay. So we've done that because the intent. Okay. My understanding was that we were going to do the interview process, 
So we went ahead and made arrangements with our current vendor to continue in through the end of February. So again, it's totally up to the board whether we you approve it today or whether we delay it and do the, the meetings. Uh, the square footage thing is going to be a, a big question, and I'll get the answer just as quickly as I can to you. Okay. I'll just add, Nancy, again, the more information we get, the better off we can kind of have conversation, though. So with that being said, if you've already extended it to end in, end in February, mm -hmm. why don't we let it go through the committee, that this new committee that could possibly vet it, we get a chance to kind of ask mm -hmm. our questions, make sure that we all are sure, and then that may <coughs> take my confidence yeah, level at a high that I can believe in. But at, at this point in time, that's why I said pull out to be considered in the, and make it a separate vote. However, if we already extended to February, why not put it all and let it come back to the committee unless the committee vet it for more so than anything. So I yield. Okay. You, let me just say this. If you change the process that was advertised, mm -hmm. you need to consider rejecting all the beds and starting yes. over. If you're going to go that route, if you're going to, and I don't know what, and I'm just okay. saying the gener generality because I haven't looked at this all, but Bill, whatever parameters you lay out to respective bidders, you got to follow that process. If you're going to amend as you go and you end up changing who you award, you're going to get sued. This, this uh, was so you need to be careful. Bid, yeah. So it was strictly a price. There was no, obviously we want a quality company, but right. we didn't ask for qualifications. We didn't ask for proposals it was a price only on price bid. Only. Well if y'all want to add other components to that you need to think about whether you need to reject all bids and start over with and put that in your request for proposal and that's what I'm flushing out now what we actually asked for and I'm not sure what we asked for. <coughs> I'll defer to you as to process but if you add a process in that's not been advertised and you change the you award yeah. you're going to have a problem. I agree. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. legal question. The discussion was about having follow-up interviews with four, the top four, the top four. Why? Why the top four? Uh, it was seen me the process was was put out to bid, and and as you mentioned, keeping the pop, the process consistent through all of the of the applicants, you'd have to mm -hmm. call all six of them. Mm -hmm. Why would you just call in four? That's the question. What I'm worried about is it sounds like it was a price only bid and there was no other requirement. So now you're adding requirements. Yeah. That's that's my concern. That if you want to add requirements, if if it was not a qualified bid, if it didn't have any parameters or thresholds. There was there was a scope of work. There was a scope of work attached. But it, again that defined what the what we wanted done in the courthouse. Well I think what they're worried about, Bill would be if I came in and said I would do it, who's never cleaned before in my life for 50000 would I have won, won this bid? Is that a problem? Because yeah. I can't do it. it it's, our ordinance gives us the ability to determine the award of a bid based on the best interest of the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our decision is not just based on price. It's, it's price plus what's in the best interest of the county. Right. So this where are we at? Point of order. Uh, we want to just pause into the first of the year. I mean, we're not doing anything right now, I think, um, administratively, but like some actions were taken in the of the board to extend um, uh, the current um, <coughs> services with a, a stay. So, okay. With that, can we just, I mean, we, we, we don't have to necessarily say that we're going to take a corporate action, but we can pause to think about it. We, we can be unsettled. We're not forced that we must make a decision on the 18th of Tuesday. So I'm um, at Tuesday of uh, December 2018. So I'd rather just pause for a second. It's just, I'm okay. And I'm, sure I'm going to yield to you guys. If it's on the agenda where I'm going to know where I'm going, but I'd say pause and, and bring it up in verse first year. Commissioner Guy, just a legal question. The bid prices are out there. So if we pull it back, we don't change the scope, then mm -hmm. everybody has seen everybody else's bid. This doesn't look good. No. So I give that. It's very bad. But if you change the scope <coughs> and make sure that the square footage is correct, and I believe that is a courtesy to those vendors. I would want to know. Given the same yeah, that's where they have the same, you know, the appropriate square footage for this mm -hmm. particular project at this time. I think that we could just. It, it appears they were given a given a square footage 
much greater than what they're actually going to be claiming. Okay. So it's unsettled for us to decide right now. If, if they all got the same information. They all got the same information, but it does appear that the square footage that Mark has is for a lot more of the courthouse than they're actually going to be cleaning. And Chair, in that case, this is a simple case that this needs to be rebuilt mm -hmm. because they were given they were given the qual they were given an incorrect qualification. You know, 125,000 square feet, whatever. They all need to be given the correct uh, number now. I to don't me, disagree. To, to me, yeah. that's that's. Yeah, we need to rebuild it. I think okay. they did it on the square footage amount. All they have to do is adjust the square footage. Mm -hmm. But they've seen the that's other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's per 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 square foot. So we're we're uncomfortable. It's okay. We we just got to pause. We can do it over. It's fine. We have a sixty day window cushion, mm -hmm. so that'll allow you to rebid it because you seem like you got um, received confirmation that it was on a larger square footage than what it really should be. It, it was. Okay. 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 Right. That sounds good. We'll move on to the next item. Disqualified. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so y'all would need to take formal action to reject any and all bids, yes. Madam Chairman, and then authorize a new bid with whatever parameters. We'll do that. Needs, that needs to be formally done. So, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do it whenever, but it, it, if you table this, it, he can't just go rebid it while we got bids sitting there. We'd have to reject them first and then rebid. Okay, we'll reject it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. We'll move on to the next item, which is tab number. Is it twenty-two? Yes, yep. Tab number twenty-two: authorization to award the bid for gravel materials to Martin Marietta for the period from January first, twenty nineteen, to December thirty-first, twenty nineteen. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We sent the bid out. We got well, one response back from Martin Marietta, which used to be a uh, blue circle. Blue circle. Mm -hmm. uh, their prices uh, show a, an average of a 10% increase over what uh, they were the low bidder last time, last year. So they're uh, we're recommending that we go with them again, but there is a 10% increase in their price. Okay. Any questions on the board? I'm All right. Again. Okay, I'll move to the next item, tab number 23, authorization to award the bid for asphalt materials for C.W. Matthews as the primary vendor and to Baldwin, a Baldwin Paving and E.R. Snell contractor as secondary vendors from the period, for the period from um, January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, asphalt materials were bid. We had our bid opening on November 30th. We received uh, bids from Baldwin, E.R. Snell, and C.W. Matthews. C.W. Matthews, the Douglasville plant is the cheapest, but even so, there's still a, uh, the, the increases range from 17 to 25 percent for each of the unit prices. Um, so there is a, a, a pretty good increase in asphalt materials for next year. Uh, but C.W. Matthews is who we're suggesting would be the primary vendor and then go to the others if, uh, if needed. 17% increase? Is that it it got, ranges from 16 to 25% okay. based on the product that we purchase. Okay. Any questions for yeah. the board? Commissioner Robson. Thank you. And, and, and Director Valentin may be on standby. So, okay, so prices are increasing, and, and you talk about asphalt, so that's going to impact my LMIG, road miles, paved, resurface, whatever you want to call yes, it, sir. or sloss. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's correct. Um, um, so we, again, we're trying to extend over time, and we're setting expectations of the public that our intent was to do this, and we have a list of things. So the list that you, we, we just approved in our last meeting, Director Valentin, uh, will this impact that? In other words, you had an estimate. And again, these are materials. I know we still got to go out and do all the bidding, but I mean, frame the correlation between all this. What, what did this just tell us? That we will have less roll miles because we only got so much of a budget? Uh, Commissioner, there, there is a strong possibility that the bids will come in higher than our estimate. Uh, however, it, it, it's not going to be this order of magnitude. It's not going to be 25% because we uh, structure the bid in such a way that we anticipated some of the increase. Okay. So uh, we may have to revisit the bid in terms of whether we eliminate some roads or add additional funding to to let the contract or to award the contract, but I do not anticipate a 17 to 25 percent variance when the bids go. All right, so I made my, my concluding comment. This is for my colleagues that were here when um, 
we had that, what we went over, we had to use capital transportation fund to follow on that because we had an estimate that was higher. And I, I can't support um, any taking money from the general fund or anything to sort of make up um, higher costs. It's like, no, you need to, what we didn't do then, which we should have did, was to scale back on the list. And, and again, it's, it's just what it was. And so, um, I mean, I'm just making a comment just for the record that I, I can't support um, if it comes in, you know, sort of an order of magnitude too far over. It's just like, we'll scale the list back. But we don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious we're out of sequence here. Mm -hmm. uh, what we should know is what our costs are going to be uh, before we make a list. So we can project out how many road miles we can pay. So I would like uh, staff and, and, uh, and Mark to determine if we can uh, modify the timeline so that we get these materials bids uh, before we make a list. And it looked to me like that would be kind of simple. So maybe, maybe the, uh, to modify the timeline, maybe the maybe this contract needs the uh, nine months or eight months so we can kind of get get in sync and know what our costs are going to be when we come up with the LMIG or SPLOS uh, paving list in the future. It's too late now. Commissioner, if, if I may, there is uh, perhaps some adjustment that we can make. <coughs> However, there is an anticipation of what the price is going to do uh, by the contractor. Mm -hmm. So if we scale back, if we, if we go earlier on the bid, they're going to have a, a risk factor in to their price because they don't know what what the price is going to be. It just so happens that we are so close to the end of the year that they have a better grasp of what 2019 is going to do. If we if we did it earlier, they will factor in that unknown and potentially we may wind up with not as much of a uh, an, a, a bid that reflects their actual cost. They may just cover the risk. Okay, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I was, I was clear. Um, I'm not saying that the materials cost needs to be bid so far in advance that they can't make a learned, you know, decision on, on what that uh, price needs to be. But it's the, it's the sequencing between material costs and the construction goals. The uh, element of element. L-M-I-G. Yeah, L-M-I-G and, and whatever, X, Y, Z uh, uh, <coughs> list. So just, uh, I, I leave it in your hands. But, uh, it just seems to me we're, we're out of sequence here. We come up with the list, and then we get a price on the materials, you know, three months later or whatever. Oh, well, it looks like we can't do the list. I, I, I did, did, no, did notice that the, we do have a, a wrong date on number 23. This is only a six-month award. So we will only okay. go through the end of June. We only do asphalt on a six-month basis. Well, I think that helps. So uh, rather than December 31st, it's June 30th. 30th. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. okay. Right. Thank so, you. Right. I yield back. All right. I'll move on to the next one. The next item is tab number 24, authorization to award the vehicle the liquid asphalt to Black Ledge uh, Emulsions Incorporation for the period for, uh, mm -hmm. from January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. Director Peacock? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Black Ledge Emulsions, I guess, is the local, lo most local vendor. Uh, yeah. And they have been who we've been using for quite a while. This is the first time we've actually sent out a bid in many years for this product. Normally we just buy from the local vendor, but we decided to go ahead and just see if there were other people that could provide it at, at a better rate. Um, unfortunately, Blackledge is the only one that submitted a bid. Uh, and so their price is $2.14 uh, $2 per um, how much is what volume is that? Is that for per gallon or per per gallon. ton or what? <laughs> per, gallon? per gallon? I think it is. I think it is. Uh, and do you know what it was in the past, what we had been paying? I do not, but I can offer this. Uh, when it's been other counties and agencies that purchase this product, and when they bid it out, regardless of where they're located in the metro area, very often, this is the only bidder that you know, they get. So uh, they are the lowest in the area. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Tab number 25, authorization 
to award a contract to Crown Contracting Group, LLC, to perform office space demolition and renovation at the Douglas County Courthouse and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock, again. Yes, ma'am. I will say this, that uh, this um, particular agenda item is dependent on the passage of the 2019 budget <coughs> because the dollars to finance this agenda item is included in the 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. But we went ahead and put it on there so that we could keep moving, knowing that you will approve the budget before this, before item, this item comes up in the consent agenda. Okay. Any questions from the so this, this, and this is for the uh, demolition and rebuild of the assessor's office mm -hmm. downstairs on the first floor to move in the solicitor's folks down there. Okay. So that's what this is for. Okay. Any questions from the board? Thank you. We'll move on to tab number 26, authorization to award a contract to Johnson Control Security Solutions, LLC, for the installation of five uh, Avalon, what is it, Avalon uh, cameras and memory capacity for the server and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents to work the Peacock. Yes, ma'am. This is fu finishing up the, uh, the last of the cameras that's needed for the security of the courthouse. Um, uh, and we're just asking that you we be given the right the be given be given the authority to go ahead and move ahead uh, with this. This this price is based on state pricing, and it's about four thousand dollars less than the actual contractor that did the original original contractor that did the work. Mm -hmm. So we're basing this contract on state pricing. Okay. Any questions from the board? It might be a source. It exists. Is it contingent? Contingent. On the, on the budget being approved? Is no, it already made no, no, made? This, this money is uh, we already got it. in the budget already. In, in 18's budget. Uh -huh. okay. And it didn't get moved over. In other words, we, we kept that here. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. I mean, Director Holland, is that true? Mm -hmm. You're not going to know. She doesn't know. She's I got to check. <laughs> I mean, this one was something that here and Dukes had to go back. And no, this is no, this is uh, this is Mark Price's for here in the courthouse. Oh, okay. Mark, do you know? Are you aware of them having to? I have to belabor this now, but I'd like to know where the source of the money is coming no, from. No, it's from his budget. It's not from it's anywhere. From the 2018 it's from budget. the 2018 budget. He's, Mr. Price is just not here to speak to it, but we'll get to it. So I'll, I'll take it off line. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move on to tab number 27, authorization to award various annual contracts for maintenance and services at the Douglas County Courthouse and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Bill Peacock again. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, there are three other um, contracts slash agreements. Uh, one is with Train. They do the annual maintenance and inspections for our big chillers, our HVAC system out back. Uh, we have two chillers and all the air handlers. And train is the uh, is uh, has proprietary uh, um, um, ability to go in and get a lot of the parts and things that other vendors may not be able to. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want train to be our vendor for this next year for the chiller annual maintenance and inspection. Then Johnson Controls again for fire life safety annual inspection and maintenance. This is to inspect our fire panels and peripherals, all the smoke detectors, the sprinkler systems, and water uh, backflow preventers. Uh, so th again, this is just the, the, the testing of the system, and we're asking that uh, Johnson Controls. They did it this past, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Critical Systems did it this past year, but Johnson Controls has actually given us better pricing for next year. And the last one is for Kone Elevator for the service and inspection of the seven elevators in the courthouse. Uh, the, again, this is um, state pricing for U.S. communities, which is uh, 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 less than what we're actually paying Kone today to provide the services, a little bit less. Okay, any questions from the board? Uh, comment? <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so um, just, just Help me bridge the gap. We have an energy audit going on. We're, we've got a replacement, um, and I think we pretty much should be halfway through, if, if not um, um, with controls for the sake of the conversation, um, which is only a part of this item. 
And so I want to know that, okay, now we're, we got new stuff that we're maintaining. And I know this contract is a replenishment of an old contract, of so old stuff that was old. Now we have a bunch of new stuff that's in. Can, can you just bridge the gap? And it may not be. I just, can somebody speak to the difference? Well, I don't think we've actually done, <coughs> done anything new to the fire panel or the smoke detectors or any of that. So that's existing equipment. Right. Uh, I don't think we've so added. I can speak a little bit. The, speak to the, the controls. Yeah that Amoresco is putting in that they kind of they bring together all of the existing controls okay and part of our contract with Amoresco is we maintain and keep upgrading all of the existing stuff okay. they bring in a system that pulls it all together so it integrates everybody correct. into one view one dashboard I'm oversimplifying right. it but is that that's correct so these individual controls still have to be updated maintained as as they always have, and we're just pulling it all into one spot now. Okay. Okay. That's why I asked. I mean, I, I, just, I, I didn't want it to be discounted what I was seeking, but you answered my question. I'm good. All right, thanks. Thank you. I'm good. Okay. We have a question. I'll move forward to the next item. Uh, the next item is tab number 28, authorization to form the following new committees, purchasing oversight committee, residential development committee, and tax abatement compliance committee. Uh, these um, also I'll just start with purchasing just to give you an idea what that uh, will entail I have on uh, approaching the question and that is basically it's just procedural based it's for competitive bidding just to kind of talk back and forth about that identify opportunities for uh, software technology upgrades so it's not in the weeds managing purchasing or the orders because that's too much it's just an oversight in a lot of um, facilities or shows so that a lot of counties do have oversight in those areas. <coughs> is one that they look at as well. And, uh, so I kind of benchmark with a few other counties that so, uh, they did have a purchasing oversight, and that's one that I would like to see added this year as we go into 2019. And then the last one, or the other two that I just <coughs> mentioned, would be the Residential Committee, uh, Development Committee, which was already kicked off this year just by looking at uh, those pipelines, <coughs> and we will continue to keep our eye on that as we uh, try to deter blight and uh, spur our economic development. And then next, Tax Abatement Compliance Committee. And that's one that we uh, picked up on that we needed this year too because we had some outliers out there that we needed to address and we already started the process. So we just wanted to make sure that these committees were official. So I will be announcing uh, all the committee assignments on the 1st of January, our first meeting in January, but if we needed to get these approved, so I could have those uh, people already have in mind who's going to be the chairman and vice chairman for these committees. But I just wanted to make sure they need to be official. So that's the reason for that. So we'll move on to tab number 29. Uh, well, first of all, any questions from the board? Before? I move to tab number 29, authorization for chairman to execute a 2019 employment agreement for contract employees. Legal department. Mark, you, you got a notebook for all these? Yes. You want to tell them? Um, <laughs> so essentially all their big contracts are on my desk for the board's review. And we sent an email out last week stating the same. Plus, we sent a spreadsheet with the, uh, the amounts of the contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 and again, I, I understand this process is the same and we really do appreciate it. Um, here's a question for all of our contracts, because I haven't, I, I need to look at them per se, or at least a couple of them that I'm interested in. But are all the contracts, do they all have one year terms? I just want confirmation. I know one of them doesn't have. I think one no, there's four a couple years. Mm -hmm. A okay. couple of four years, which is uh, voter registration and right. also. Mm -hmm. Monica Miles is a two year. Monica Miles is a two year. Okay. All right. So, so uh, again, term of contract um, uh, uh, notice. Um, are they all? I'm just looking for consistency. I don't have to believe in this left I can just take this offline. I just, I'm, I'm just curious. So I'll, I'll, Mark, you don't have to talk. I'll get with Jim Moore and we'll clarify. Sure. Okay. Thank right. you. Yes, and, and I voiced this in our budget uh, process last year and. Commissioner Walker agreed with me, said we need to look at this, uh, the fact that uh, contract employees also get merit increase. Um, we increased some individuals this time, and, and that's the way we've always done contract employees, but I don't agree that they get the merit increase. I can see the cost of living, 
but I can't see the merit. And we were going to look at that between last year and this year to see if we should revisit that um, <coughs> standard that we're doing. Does anybody recall the conversation in those remarks? No, I remember something about. Uh, I remember something about the merit discussion, and I think, I think it was a follow-up discussion uh, among the five commissioners, whether in, in legal, whether it was appropriate or should it be changed. But, uh, well, my contention is when they are put under contract, they're no longer merit employees, and they should not get the merit increase. Cost of living raise is one thing, but the merit increase. And um, we're going to discuss this between last year and this year, and I guess the ball will drop. Right? We did. Mm -hmm. Well, um, going into 2019, I'll take me 2020. I'll take a look at it as we go forward. Though. Because we, you know, we we mm -hmm. we select we selected certain people, and they got increases where everybody else didn't. So that's the way the contract employees should be. Mm -hmm. Based on performance. I mean, I, I think that's a valid question, a valid issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd, I'd prefer your promise if you Yeah, well, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I, and I, when I say I'm going to do something, I always deliver. But what I'm going to do is some benchmarking a little bit to see what other places have done with contracts. What I'm accustomed to is just what we're doing. And I think this has been the history uh, for Douglas County government. I've always purchased. I, I know you have, but I've, I've, I've been, been consistent in that, too. But, the, the but they're not married employees. Yes. yes. So why do they get a merit increase? That's, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, uh, just, yeah. just so you all know. Commissioner Rob, you want to? Yeah, let me, let me weigh in. And I'll let you clean this up, Ken. Now, Madam Chair. Now. Yes. All right. Uh, and again, compensation in, in a moderate sized county that has grown up is becoming, it, it, it was a way business was done here. You took care of your own. You create contracts and you create employment agreements that allow people to have parish food children. You made them feel comfortable. You, you, you gave them great benefits. Um, there was a lot that was built in. All you have to do is look at it and be real about like, okay, yeah, okay, I see how the cash flows. You took care of your own. You gave contracts, it gave you, it gave you flexibility to build in certain perks. And, and so I'm listening to this and it's like, okay, how convenient. And this is me. I, I, I don't have a, I, I, I'm okay with it. I don't feel bad about it. I just sort of like, hmm, yeah, we could, maybe we couldn't. Um, but I, I, to, to change it, it's just like, but, but why? Um, I, I just haven't heard a compelling argument of it in the fact that, but yeah, I get it. But now we'll now take away that that, that, that was institutionalized over time. Um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a realist. I look at it for what it really is. It's like, yeah, I get it. Um, should, you know, should, should, should you go focus on something else to sort of like, I don't know about that one. That, that one is going to require some real debate if you decide to take that one up, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm, I mean, again, I, yes, I, do, I have a great memory. I do recall stuff, and I, I yes, you, you are consistent. I just don't know if I will be on the side of, of, of and maybe while we didn't get anywhere, you got to get three people, to, you know, at least two people to discuss and three to even get changed. And so I, I personally just, I don't know about this. I, I, I think about the employees that got it right now, and I'm like, <coughs> Well, leave them alone right now. I got stuff I can work on right now. I don't know if I would want to touch that, but okay. But I, I, I will respect my peers and, and the little over there. I yield. Sorry. Madam Chair, just without, it's a policy decision for y'all how to handle this, but I just want to point out there's a difference in the employment <coughs> contracts in group uh, item number 29 versus the vendors in 30, which include me. The vendors in 30 don't get merit. I haven't had a raise in a, over a decade. I just want to make sure it's clear. But the 29, the people in 29, they are subject to portions of the merit system. The difference is they're easier to fire. And so their employees, and in fact, the performance and rating review is in their contracts. And so I just want to make be careful that uh, they aren't vendors in the sense the group in 30 are vendors. I'm a vendor. Uh, and the employees are, they're employees for all other purposes except for the way they get fired. They've waived their right 
to, and, and y'all have elected not to have that position, it's a control thing. It's how we move people if we want to move them more quickly, where they're not bureaucrats their whole life if we don't want them to be. But I will say, when we're talking about performance and ratings, they are subject to that section of the merit system. There's certain portions of the merit system that's actually buried in their contract that specifically apply. Now, I'm not saying it's clear they automatically get raises or colors and all that, but there's a difference between the group in 29 versus the group in 30, which I'm in. I'm in the group in 30. Okay. okay. So we're pretty self-explanatory. My, my, the whole notion of my idea around merits and colors for our directors, number one, no, we have to compete. Number two, if you go to other counties, you look at those salaries based on these positions that we're hiring, and I know some of the sizes are a little larger, and we have some that are comparable. They're stepping their game up, and I want to step ours up. So I'm very comfortable with just a little bit that we have. I looked at the list from many years, and I talked about it last year. About four or five years, we had where we had a period no one got a raise around here uh, in Douglas County. So I'm very comfortable with my decision. I'm looking forward with the idea of just giving them something to keep them motivated because they can go elsewhere. The market is wide open today. It's competitive. Uh, when you look at just uh, purchasing, let's say a director or somewhere else, they make they <coughs> starting off at 140,000, 50,000. We got to step our game up if we just keep it because we have some talent here, some talent that I want to retain. So I look at just retention is very important to me too, Commissioner, because we have to retain our talent here. Uh, certainly want them to feel rewarded uh, based on the amount of work that they do. And if, when I look at those scales in other parts of, the, of Georgia, we're still behind a little bit. And I'm trying to, I'm from, from that director's standpoint, and also from our staff, in which I'm trying to just take care of the whole, uh, I'm looking at it holistically, and I've done that. And I'm, I'm trying. We're, we're behind. The uh, recession put us behind. And I know I can't make up for lost time, but what I will do uh, as the leader of this, of this county is to see what I can do to compensate our staff based on the performance they put forth. I am looking at performance base. That's important to me. Uh, Director Perry is working with me on that. I don't like the idea of everybody getting the same thing. That's not fair. <coughs> we need to look at performance base uh, increases and that we are working on that. We have the, the system, but we just need the software as we go forward. Everybody needs to say, you know, those directors, or when they uh, evaluate their staff, they need to, if 3% if is awarded for that particular year, somebody may get a 2.5 because they didn't step the game up, they didn't check all the boxes, and they didn't meet all the criteria. So, but that's going, that's coming full, forward. Usually in government, everybody gets the same thing, and I, I'm accustomed to that. But uh, right now, um, that's just my take, and I just want to not change that. We could probably chase some other things, some other rabbits rather than this one. But I, I appreciate and respect your, your uh, ideas. I think that's uh, important and I respect you. Okay? I'm going to move on to the next item. So we'll move on to the next item. Uh, the next item we're going to talk about number 30. And that's what the attorney just talked about. And these, uh, are, these are all your vendors. These are annual contracts uh, with all the vendors listed. And it, it looks like the list has grown, but really it hadn't. The juvenile court uh, and some of these public defenders, the way their contract has to be specific as to how it's spelled out. So it's the same position. And those are also in a notebook. And Mark, did you highlight those two like you did the group in 20, 29? Highlight I mean, you got them in a notebook. There's so a notebook on the desk. Also, there's another notebook for employee car allowances. So that notebook is our, our employees that don't have a contract that have an employment contract that have car allowances. So, so that notebook is on the table as well. Okay. There are two contracts that are not ready. Um, West Georgia Regional Library, we typically, on an annual basis, approve it in uh, December and then approve it again in January because the contract ends up changing. So we're going to wait till January on that one. Also, Old Courthouse Inc., which is History and Tourism, so I reviewed their contract, um, so we need to sit down with them and come up with a new contract because 90% of the items that are in there is no longer fall under their purview. So, um, so those two will come in January. Okay. And I won't, I, my commissioners, I know you can read this is a long list, but it just take the hand out of my sales. So I'll just look at the list tomorrow. 
as okay. we go forward. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's quite mm -hmm. a few names. Yeah. Um, I just have one question before I go into the approval of expenses tomorrow. Well, let me just do that first. Approval of expenses. Commissioners, please take a look at our expenses and be prepared to approve accordingly. And then I wanted to just uh, ask our director of purchasing, um, Director Peacock, if, just if, if you had an insight, we talked about the um, bidding out of the top of funerals, and you know, we talked about seeing if we could bring in a lower price, and that's something I pro promise the citizens of Douglas County. Do you have anything, an update? Um, we did receive one bid back from. Um, mm -hmm. Jones Wynn. I, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, yeah, they're the ones that got out of the top. Yeah, I went blank there. And uh, I think the, my remembrance, I don't have it with me, is their price was $815 to do a uh, uh, cremation of a body, which we had been paying $915, I think. $915. So, also, Jones Wynn is the only. One with only one in the county that has a crematory. So any of the other uh, uh, funeral homes either go to Jones Wynn or send them out of the county to the Atlanta to be cremated. So. so you said it came in at 815? I think it was 815. Okay. So did you have you had any dialogue with them with the coroner so we can make sure you just... The, the coroner it? has taken the initiative initiative to have a conversation with Jones Wynn. Okay. Good. Okay. Sounds good. All right, let's move on to the next so, item. Okay, we'll let, oh, hands yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Just so it goes beyond the state of conversation mm -hmm. for the coroner and Jones Wayne, we would, would like the commission to follow through and make sure there's a, an agreement reached. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, he's going to do that. That's why I was coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, make I yield sure back. Make sure you close the loop for I yield back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, commissioner? Yeah, I, so what did I hear? Did we go out? So we had a bid, what we, what, is this some type of administrative insurance? <coughs> we went out and just checked some prices and now it gets set administratively or what, what did I just hear? Uh, we, we sent, we developed a, a, a scope of work yep. that we wanted the funeral homes to provide to us. Yep. Mainly uh, the cremation of pauper bodies. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, <coughs> that quote, again, it's not a bid, it's a quote. It's a quote was sent out to the funeral homes and the only response that I saw come back was from Jones Wynn and again that's because they're the only ones that have a crematory but we gave the other um, funeral homes an opportunity to say maybe they wanted to be involved and were willing to you know make some other arrangement to get their bodies cremated at a lower price than what they may currently be charging us. I think I got it. So this falls with below the five thousand um, dollars. This this is on the administrative side. It is. I, I think that this is something mm -hmm. um, because of the dollar amount. Just make to your point, Commissioner Walker. Make sure we've got this in writing. They set expectations with the coroner. I mean, I just close the gap. I got it. I got where I'm at. I'm good. It, it, it doesn't need to come before us. I think this was just what a, yeah. an acknowledgement is, is what I'm hearing. Um, but okay. yeah, work it out administrative and executive side. Director Hallman. I just had an uh, answer to the question on number 26 about the award to the contract with Johnson Control Security uh, Solutions for the five cameras and memory capacity. Um, my, um, uh, Michelle back there, she had her computer up and so she looked it up and she confirmed it is in the 2018 budget. Okay. It's it, okay. Is. it is. It is. 2018. So we, we got money, we didn't move it. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Uh, last but not least is tab number 36, uh, Tourism and History Board appointment, and I believe our clerk had just an uh, update for us. We're going to do it in the back. Oh, you want to do it? Okay. All right. Well, with that being Yes. I, I, again, I, I, back to the board appointments, I mean, it's something that I, I think uh, citizens and, and, and the public uh, sometimes are interested in. Um, sometimes we don't um, get as many applicants as we would like. I mean, sometimes it's hard to fill some of these positions, but I just want to encourage uh, the citizens who are listening to this, those who either come through our active citizens, civic engagement type organizations, or people that we, uh, who are uh, in, in sort of that circle that sees these things that we continue to promote um, and invite people to, to actually apply. Now, I recognize that people are busy. I mean, we've got 150,000 people and we're always in executive session and we're trying to find names trying to encourage people to sort of apply to this but this stuff um, uh, and I guess I'm going to close with this we do 
um, advertise these, don't we? Uh, can you just, if, for the record, that there is a process that everybody's open to do it, and that it's just not no elite, um, 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 I want to say, uh, awarding of seats to friends. I, I just want to address that. Anybody can apply for these positions and stuff. I, I had to address that because the citizen brought it up before. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I do reach out to um, the boards when we do have openings coming up just to inquire if existing members want to be reappointed and whether they do or don't, I still advertise in the Sentinel and as well as on the website um, any openings that the boards have. So any citizen can apply? Yes. Uh, whether it, 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 there's uh, an incumbent for the sake of the conversation or not, anybody can apply. Is Correct. that accurate? Yes, sir. And is there a duration in which we keep them on file? Does they, they just go into a file? Or is it a refresh? I mean, just again, just for the record. I do keep them on file. I, we do currently we do not refer back to them as we have openings, just okay. because a lot of the times maybe a year that's lapsed, or even two, you know, because some of these boards sits every four years or every three years. Okay. Right, so it's sort of like almost like our vendors where they, they fill out an application and stuff and then they may not hear anything. There's a need for them to come out and seek and look and so mm -hmm. forth. It ain't like we will knock on your door. So, so Director right. Peacock, I acknowledge. Uh, so again, consistently for the public, you got to stay abreast. you got to have mm -hmm. them do your part to, to apply mm -hmm. um, for these things. So mm -hmm. I yield back here. Thank you. Madam Chair, you. Yeah. And, I, and I would okay. augment the discussion on this. I, I uh, am working with the uh, uh, Director of Communications, uh, External Communications. Uh, I'm going to provide uh, our county clerk with a uh, list of people to the, of the uh, Citizens Academy, mm -hmm. and uh, and perhaps get them on a, kind of on a continuing uh, mailing list because I know several of them have, ex have expressed interest. In fact, several of them have, have participated, mm -hmm. but uh, just kind of an ongoing. And then as we graduate another class, they go into the into the uh, into the feed, if you will. So I'll work with the county clerk on that. Okay, so. thank you. All right. Any other comments before I call for uh, check with the attorney to see if we have an executive session? We're going to need all three. Then, too. Okay. Real estate litigation and personnel. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a motion to go into executive session. Board of commissioners. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion to second. second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Take a two-minute break and we'll yep. see you back in a few minutes. Yep. That was pretty well. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. That was efficient. Mm -hmm. That was good. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. We're back on. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do you have any other questions or comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, this morning. Yeah. Did, Matt. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this morning, Madam Chair, we, we had a transportation committee meeting. Um, the meeting was rescheduled. It was supposed to be for tomorrow, our standing meeting. We just moved it up. I just want to say that for the record. County Clerk, I just want to confirm that it was properly announced and, and notice was given to the public that it moved. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, County Administrator, was there anything else that, out of that? We made some recommendations. Is there anything that's coming forth on this agenda item? Um, um, no, not on this agenda. Okay. So nothing on this agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the recommendation came for the Moreland for the road ratings will be on the first meeting in January? Yes, yeah, it should be. Okay. All right. Mr. Walker, that's your understanding? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You good with that? Oh, yeah. Okay, because you won't be here for that. But <laughs> well, maybe I'll come in for that. <laughs> okay. All right, fair enough. I just want to confirm. What committee that. you want to serve? I mean, what uh, board, board you want to serve? Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a little. I'm gonna take okay. a little time Thank off. You. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna take some time off, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay involved with the green space, and the trail space, and the trail extension is huge for Douglas County. Good. Thank we you. kind of touched on that in our committee meeting, but nothing to report really of significance. But uh, one of the to help the county in those particular areas because I can be just an extra set of uh, eyes, and feet, and hands, and that sort of thing, and I work through my commissioner as appropriate and through, and through uh, all of you as appropriate. I'm not going to be a long ranger. But, uh, trail commission. Trail commission. <laughs> that would be nice. Trail commission. All right. Uh, well, Commissioner um, Mulcair, thank you for mm -hmm. your many years of service. I and mean, you are certainly a great uh, statesman. And uh, we appreciate that you've done for the county. This is your last workshop session. Work session, yeah. And um, we have uh, your contribution will 
definitely reign on the top of the forefront of my mind for right. what you've contributed uh, to this Thank board. You. And we appreciate you. It's so anyway, anything else from the Board of Commissioners? With that being <coughs> said, this meeting is adjourned. All right.